Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gotham City. I'm your host, Levy Rosman. This is a podcast where I talk to people who live in the chess world on the 64 squares, but also beyond them. And today we are going, in fact, beyond them as we are having a conversation with poker professional Lex Veldhaus. Uh, Lex is extremely accomplished both in live poker and in online. He has the largest poker channel on Twitch, and he actually is the first Twitch channel that I ever watched. Uh, and he was a big inspiration for me to begin streaming as well. We talk about that and a whole lot more over the course of about two hours. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Uh, you've heard me say this, but I don't know how many people have heard me say this. Uh, definitely not on YouTube but, uh, or, or in podcasts, but you were the first Twitch channel I ever saw. I think most people, when they go to Twitch, they see some sort of shooting games or whatever. Uh -huh. I have no idea how I came across your channel. Honestly, I don't remember. And I just remember I would sit there and I would have your beats on in the background and I would just hear you talk. And in poker, you don't always talk constantly. You like yeah. take pauses. And the impression I got was like, you're just a really chill fucking dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I feel like even with myself, when I'm on my Twitch, it's really exaggerated. It's kind of more like a stand up act. You know, I'm cracking jokes. I don't behave that way if you catch me off stream. Okay. And I got the vibe from you that you're just sitting there. You're not trying to be someone you're not. You're just like a chill guy and you're just doing what you love or, you know, what you've been doing your whole life. So, uh, yeah. Can you, can you kind of like take me through what it was like? Cause I feel like you were a bit of a pioneer for Twitch, at least in poker. And I mean, how did um, that all get going? Well, you know, first of all, I always kind of felt like with streaming, if you're going to do something where it's on camera, you're under the attention of a lot of people. I've always felt that the best way for sustainability and continuity and to stay closest to yourself, like to make the most natural content, is just be yourself, right? So if I'm tired, I'm fucking tired, right? And the stream is going to be a little bit lower energy, but chill and we can have conversation. And I can be pretty manic in my personality, like something can just pop me off and I can stand up and start screaming and stuff. So I've also never tried to put a ceiling on that. So... um I just figured, like, if I'm going to do this, then people have to want to watch for me and not for what I try to be or try to do, right? And that, that way I can do it for the, for the most time. And it's also less strenuous on, on whatever I try to achieve because sometimes I'd be, I'd be seeing, like, a poker stream or something and you see them bust out of a big tournament and you can see their soul just crippling, just, you know, absolutely breaking down inside. And they'll try to put on a happy face because they want to show appreciation and stuff. And I feel like sometimes it's also really important for people to hear that it's just fucked up, you know? So I kind of stepped in with that mentality and just felt like, okay, this is, you know, when I started streaming, I had been playing, uh, so I've been playing poker for 18 years professionally now. So I dropped out of university uh, when I was 20, uh, went for poker. That's 18 years ago, I'm 38 now, and I've been streaming for six years. So um, I was already uh, playing poker for 12 years uh, when I wanted to try streaming. So in my head, I just thought like, I just have to give this the best shot and this is this just has to work or it doesn't. And then I might have to reevaluate things or what I want to do or, you know, at a sort of like a crossroads. Um, so I actually thought about streaming earlier because I made my Twitch account uh, early 2011, so 11 years ago, uh, mostly watching StarCraft. Um, you know, I started watching uh, Dota and stuff and... Um, and then I just had the idea, like, I think this could be re working really well uh, with poker as well. So um, at that time, you know, I, I sponsored by PokerStar, so I have to check with them on those things, right? Like, it's important that, you know, that they would to just kind of like see if they would want to follow that road or if they saw something. So I did, for the boards, I did, a, I did a test stream and they just pretty much said, like, I have no fucking clue what's going on, but it looks cool, you know? So... Um, <laughs> then I, I, I thought about it a lot, but I was in a very unstable period in my life. So I was just like, you know, being at, at some sort of crossroads already. And I, I just thought to myself, like, do I really want to set aside this poker grind that I've been doing for 12 years and take on Twitch with that and not know really how it goes and if it lands well and everything? Um, so I decided to go for stability, um, which was a mistake because then I had a few pretty mis miserable years playing poker, but I actually got into streaming then like two, three years after that. And there were definitely some people picking it up, but I do think that I was uh, one of the first people that, show that you could do it in any time zone a lot of people were very american uh american based and i started streaming european daytimes um and also where you could just curse and you could uh you know you could you could be mad and you can show emotion and sometimes you can tell somebody to fuck off 
uh, which I love when you do a good chat rose, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, uh, you know, yeah, continue. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, so, you know, in a way, like, am I, am I one, you know, you had, you had Jason Somerville was a, uh, Jake Garver Boca was a big streamer, uh, on Twitch and, um, but I, I feel like I'm the first one that kind of broke through in a sort of like, um, rough around the edges kind of way. Um, so yeah. I, I, first of all, uh, no, I, I, I mean, I appreciate the, uh, the intro. I, I basically, before we, uh, connected today, I knew a little bit, uh, about your background as a, as a professional poker player. Cause I, I know you guys in poker, you have, um, you have, I mean, live, and then you have, uh, you obviously have the whole online thing. Um, yeah. and I, I, I'm very been closely involved with the chess world since I was six. <laughs> so for, I mean, I haven't been a professional chess player since I was six, uh, but I, I don't know if I've ever been a professional player, but I've, I've always been uh, kind of professionally involved. I mean, I was even giving private lessons when I was 13. And I mean, back then you make 15 bucks an hour. You think you're it's like, you know, Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah. So I've been doing that for some time, but yeah, I, I can, I can safely say that when I, was like the the whole way I tried to in in some ways model some of my early streaming days was literally after your channel. I was kind of in awe of some of the alerts. I was in awe of just like the whole layout and clean. And like, did you did you have help with that, or did you? I mean, were, were those alerts custom made? I felt like you were quite ahead of your time with with yeah. some of those things. Um, I mean that's that's a big compliment, first of all. But you know, it's um, I just kind of felt like. I feel like if you look at attention spans of people, right? Like, let's say I click through a directory and I watch so much fucking Twitch. Like, I would just have it on all the time when I was grinding poker. So if you click on something and somebody is not even trying in terms of overlay or graphics and they just have, like, some shitty-ass, you know, setup and everything doesn't work well and stuff like... If somebody has, like, zero commitment to try to make something good, why would I commit to it, you know? Mm -hmm. If somebody can step up, and make some sort of like base of overlay or do some research in it. Like how committed are they to streaming a lot? And why would I start sort of like investing my time in that bonding to somebody, right? Because that's what you do. You bond to people that you like or you like their vibe and stuff. So I just figured that that has to be really good. Um, and I am pretty good at knowing what I want. I just can't make it myself. So like I can, I can storyboard. I have this cartoon intro. I can storyboard the whole thing with like MS Paint. And then I'll have some professional cartoonist make it, you know. Um, so I, I usually know what I want and I just try to, to find the people that can help with that. Um, but I just always, I had to actually have to give a lot, uh, up a lot in terms of, you know, if you're a streamer and you're a poker player, you have to make choices because you're trying to build two verticals. You're trying to build two things. So I just thought to myself, like, you know, what, what do I need to sacrifice to become a successful streamer? So I just need to make sure that the streaming side is good. And I invested, like, everything in streaming, all my time, community building, thinking about it. Like, I would make these... If I was on a trip, like, on a poker trip, I would, I would sit in a plane and I would just play, like, this heavy metal music because, it, for some reason, it makes me very creative and tuned in whenever I'm brainstorming. Wow. And I would just sit there blasting, like, fucking clouds over California or some dark shit. And I would just make a to-do. I would just like think about everything that I do, like all my commands, my chat, um, graphics. And I would just try to shoot holes in. And I would just make these like 90-point to-do lists of things that needed to be better or tweaked. And I would just do this like every couple of weeks um, to try and perfect it. And then slowly as time passed, like I started realizing like the best thing I can do for my stream now is study poker, which came later, which I started really, really uh, kind of reinventing myself on, on that platform like a couple of years ago. But yeah, I just put a lot of time and effort into thinking about, you know, the, the stream setup. And I feel like if somebody clicks your stream, it needs to be where they're like, oh, okay. And then, you know, after I try to make everything as chill as possible. I don't have a whole lot of moving objects in my overlay. I try to make, you know, there needs to be center points of focus. And if somebody's going to sit down and watch a, a poker tournament for seven hours, you know, they can't have some some dopamine overdose uh, with fucking... It's it's different for every game, right? Like I'm not trying to shit on people when I do certain things, but like I can't watch like fucking bit cups and shit flying and fucking moving chats and scrolling pieces and scrolling this and fucking follower goals and you know, like sometimes it's just like holy shit, what are you trying to do? You know? So I try to stay away from that and just again it's because it's what I like and I hope that people like it because that's just the way it has to be. 
You know, uh, you've been in my stream recently. You know, like the my icons at the top, like that's you. Like you in inspired that, and it's been that oh, way. Yeah? So yeah, since twenty eighteen, literally, I was oh. like, oh, that's really nice. I really like that, and I had to like look around the internet. How do I uh, link Spotify to a text file? And I found this fucking snip or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's glitchy. It lags. Like it, ha like for some reason, it hasn't had any improvements uh, for a while. So sometimes, I, um, and uh, I had tried to find like you know uh, uh, the same color icon. I, I always enjoyed your, uh, I always enjoyed the comparisons that you look like the Terminator. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm telling you, like you you literally inspired uh, my my earliest days of streaming. And chess is a kind of game like um, we don't need you know big graphics cards. We don't need crazy uh, moving things. Like the the pieces move, you know. Yeah. And uh, I I I I'm a firm believer, even since like I was in high school, that you should work smart, not hard. And I, uh -huh. I also used to have those brainstorming sessions on my Twitch channel, but now I'm like, I need the board, you know. I. I I'm too lazy and, and I've had help, you know, I've had some help, but it's been about three and a half years and I've had like the inspiration, the, the OG for having the music up there and then, uh, and then, and then having that stuff is, uh, yeah, it's all you. And that's amazing, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's I don't know. Crazy. If, I don't know if you realize that, like that, that's literally cause you do it that way. I don't know if other people do yeah. it that way, but, uh, yeah, I, I, um, that's, that's where it's from. So that's uh, crazy. And I, you know, you know, another, another thing that's actually like very, I don't know if you do this deliberately, but in your stream, there's little sounds that sound really appealing, like out of nowhere. And first of all, it's the sound of when it's your turn, like bloom, mm. like that little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, there's, uh, like the, the, the alert volume historically has always been really like nice. And it started with like, you know, I'm the Terminator, and I was like, ah, somebody yeah, yeah. resubbed. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So no, nah, I mean, like, I've been a, I've been a student of very few channels in my life, and I would say that that yours was a uh, was just great. I would just have it on in the background for hours, and then one of the things that absolutely blows my mind, and I, like to the I, to this day, I just completely don't understand it. How do you how do you stream for 14 hours? It like is it just because there's potentially big money involved? That must it must be the only way mm. you can justify it, right? Like it. it it's just crazy to me. I, I I'm fried after three. Like I, I think I've from a very young age I I trained this sort of stamina to I like to be focused on things as well. You know, like in regular life I have like pretty bad ADD, so I literally walk up to grab to grab like whatever my phone, mm -hmm. and I'll be in the bathroom. I was like, oh, I have to put my lenses in, and then back down. I think oh, I have to pick this up from upstairs, and I have like, and then I forget all of them again. And then I come downstairs and I was like, why didn't I bring anything? And I realized I forgot eight things, you know? I mean, this is not like a typical, you know, it's not like I'm walking to walls all day long or something. But um, so I naturally always try to, I, I liked focusing on things for long times. And I've always really liked video games. So when I was six years old, uh, I used to go to kindergarten at uh, 8.30 and I got this, I, I said to my parents, oh, I like this little alarm clock, the way it looks or something. And they're like, oh, you can tell the time and whatever. And I figured out how to set the alarm. And I would set the alarm at 5 a.m. Uh, so that I could play Mega Man and Zelda uh, before school. So I would just play like three hours, four hours. And um, then I started playing a lot of StarCraft in my teenage years. And even in StarCraft, I've had some 20, 30-hour sessions wow. um, where I was just playing a lot. So it kind of came natural within poker. Um, I've done some like really, really absurd sessions in poker, like 90 hours, 70 hours, 50 hours, like that sort of thing. Um, so I've kind of always felt like I've had that stamina. And um, with streaming, I also kind of wanted to show everybody, like, I don't know, I'm very competitive. And it's, it's sometimes it, it's not like to the point of pettiness. Like if I go play pool with friends and I should be winning or something and I lose, it's like fine, you know, you fist bound and whatever. It's just all good. But uh, so I'm not competitive in sort of like a petty way, but I am very competitive in terms of I want to smash the people I stream against, right? I want to smash the people I play poker against. And I've always wanted that. Like I really villainize the people I play against. I'm not, I'm not one where like, oh, it doesn't matter who you play. You win some pots versus this person, that person. If I play against somebody on poker and I play against them every day, I want to fucking annihilate him, you know? But and you, I, don't, you don't act like that on stream, do you? It's like internal. Is it? Yeah, it's in, it's internal, yeah. and I'll, I'll show. Like I could say, I could, for instance, it, it it's it sometimes could be sounding like it's personal. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't get like oh this fucking guy, uh, like you know. Well, mm -hmm. I I do say that, but like nothing worse, you know. So, but then I could say like oh it's always this fucking guy. I'm gonna destroy this fucking guy tomorrow or something. But then in the chat I'll be like, hey, nice hand, GG, well played. 
You know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not sour to where it actually becomes personal, but I always really like that competitive aspect. And if somebody destroys me, I'll give them props for it. But that, then I want to try and beat them or something. And I have that same kind of thing in streaming. So I really wanted to become the biggest streamer, you know? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do it naturally. Like I'm not gonna sort of like cut corners or 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 fade away my personality or or my preferences or something. Or I want to stay true to myself, but um, I really wanted to become the biggest poker streamer. And sort of like the long sessions became a part of that because I wanted to show people like, you're not gonna catch me on work ethic. You know, if somebody, there was, there was a big streamer I was competing as who was a friend of mine and he, you know, I was in a uh, Pacific time zone when I was traveling Costa Rica and stuff with my uh, now wife and we're traveling around and I was, you know, streaming five, six days a week for 10 hours and he was in Eastern time so he could get up later and be online first. And then he tried to be online an hour before me. And then I just got up at 4 a.m. every day to show him, like, I'm still going to fuck you. Every day I'll be online earlier wow. and I'll go to bed last. You know, it's just to like, you know, so, you know, so it's, it, that, that's why it, that's why uh, I, I've always done long sessions and that's why in streaming as well. But also, it's very natural for poker to have like a flow of the later you get in a day, the bigger the spot becomes. You know, you start a tournament, there's not much going on. When you at the end of the day, that's usually when the one tournament, you know, I play like 30, 40 tournaments a day. That's the one tournament that could be the one. So it's sort of like it, it becomes an adrenaline thing as well, where you're just like now it becomes natural. Like if you can get fucking tired during this tournament, what are you doing? You know, first of all, uh, I remember chess had those days as well. I think a lot of people don't realize that streaming is kind of fickle. It's not I don't know if fickle is the right word, but it oftentimes Benji. Or my dog, there's a mirror here. I'm sorry. Come here. Yeah, that's fine. It's just, you know, it's, he found a little buddy, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. But if this mirror falls, I'm probably going to die. Uh, 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 yeah, good yeah, content, so, though. Uh, it would be good content. And the, this, the, the podcast does have a video element. So the people listening in, on Spotify won't get to see that. Um, no, but I mean, like, the Chess had a day like that, uh, days like that as well, where if a big streamer boots up, like, an hour before you, you're like you're not taking their audience whether you're small like that's it they're there and they're gonna listen to you in the car or get some work done or you know they'll watch the hour and then they'll leave you're not gonna yeah. poach viewers um it's it's not as big of a thing now but i, I definitely uh i i learned to relax in terms of view count like i remember uh, i would um get super stressed. Like, I don't know if you would get super stressed. It sounds like waking up at 4 a.m., you know, that you have yeah. to stress about view count. It's like the only metric that you have. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely a challenge. Uh, and yeah, that's... but, you know, it's, it's like, I do think that, like, where you say you relax about it, but I just realized that if you, what is the, what, like, you know, if you look at the whole process, like, what is, what do I want to do? Do I want to stream and play high stakes poker in four years from now, five years from now? If the answer is yes, I'm not going to get there doing it 11 hours a day for six days a week. And at a certain point, I was at a TwitchCon in San Jose in America and I collapsed. Uh, like I had, I was standing on the street and I was just like, Oh, I feel, I feel, you know, I get a bit hangry sometimes. So I feel like, oh, I need to eat something. So I went to this coffee shop and I wanted to get a bagel or whatever. And I was like, I was standing in line. I was like, oh, I don't feel so good. And I was like, hmm, I need to go outside. And I was just standing there and I just started wobbling and I just headbutted the pavement. You know, I just went full force into the ground. I was just sitting there and I had to go to an emergency room. And then they said like, well, you know, you're, you know how you do, you have something checked out and you're kind of always expecting when it's your heart. song. oh no, it's just an incidental thing. And just gave me the printout and it's like, yeah, you have a heart, you had heart issues. And I was like, what? And then I came back and I did a, a whole lot of testing and stuff. And it's like, oh, well, it's just, you collapsed because of stress. And that just made me reevaluate some things, right? Like, what am I doing then? You know, I'm literally taking years off my life. And, and now all of a sudden I'm overworked. I'm stressed. I felt like I have I had like emotional attacks, you know, I was just completely fucking worked through the bone. So and I was also like, I, I just noticed as well, I started looking back some streams and my, my, my wife said like, hey, you know, I'm in the other room, like your stream doesn't sound so chill anymore when you're losing and stuff. Like, it's really not that pleasant to listen to. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's emotion and people like it and it's poker. She's like, okay, okay. You know, she, she slowly reintroduced the, pro the, the, the conversation. But now after I collapsed, she was like, hey, stop. You know, we need to, we need to talk about this. And, and I started talking to this coach and talk, thinking about longevity. and. And then he 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 kind of really made me see like taking three days off or taking 
the evenings off to spend time with your family, that's the kind of balance that you need that's just as important as having a good work week, right? If I want to do this in five years or 10 years, or I want to, you know, have, have a fucking good working heart when I'm 70, that this is part of the process. So that's when I became a lot more chill. And yes, it costs you viewers, but I also gain more balance in life, you know? So there's a lot of things that come back from it, but I, I feel like you need this re realization moment. And I think the pursuit of, of, of viewership can be so toxic, you know? It, it's also... The fucked up thing is that, or the stupid thing about it is that I wanted to stay so true to myself at the start. And this is, this is how I normally am. And the only difference is I'm turning on a camera and I'm not going to act on camera. I'm not going to do all these things. I'm not going to be fucking politicking and networking with people I really don't gel with just because it's good for me or something. And I have all these things. And, but then I'm going to work way harder than I should. That takes the balance away from things that I value very highly, like good relationship with friends, my family, like, you know discovering the world we're fucking in costa rica we're in japan and i you know i'm sitting there drooling in bed because i can't fucking get my head out of work or something so like so it's kind of funny that i i walk past myself but i had a i had a really rude awakening in that sense and it, like i've just been way better after that yeah that's crazy i somehow you you wrote to me prior uh to today about the the, the collapsing thing and i somehow i don't even like I don't even remember that. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just been a crazy few years for chess, and I, I've I've lost a lot of memories of random things because <laughs> I've just been so locked in. I, I'm sure you know the feeling because poker is a, such an engrossing uh, game. But yeah. I mean, uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's insane, man. Um, I mean, what? First of all, what was that even even like? I mean, you're just ordering coffee at a coffee shop. Yeah. You're like you get lightheaded, you walk out, and. Yeah, it was, it was really scary because I, I didn't really realize what was happening. And I just felt like I had to sit down. So I just like I had to sit down. And then all of a sudden, I am just getting back up. And I just I felt like my face hurt. And I saw all this earth. Like I felt like half across like this, uh, this these plants and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was earth on my hands. And I just fell. And I was like shaking. And I was like getting back up. And I was just like like very short of breath, like hyperventilating a little bit. And I was just like, wait, what the fuck just happened? You know, I just turned off or something. I was just sitting there and I was just like, and there was this group that was clearly also like visiting TwitchCon and, and, and I just sat there and, I, and he just started going really weird into survival mode, you know, because you know something fucked up's happening. So I remember so well that I thought like, oh, they see somebody collapsing in the street. It also scares people. So... But, and I thought to myself, when I'm wearing normal clothes and I'm wearing a badge, so people know that I might also go to TwitchCon. And I was like, and I just looked at, I just looked at them. I was like, I was just like, help, you know, like help. Cause I really didn't know what was going on and I, I couldn't sit. And I, I felt like, I, I really felt like I was just like, sort of like fading away. I was just like, help. And these guys had to step back. So I realized, oh fuck, you know, that this might be scary for them. So I pulled out cash that I had in my pocket. Please help. You know, showing like, I'm not, I don't want anything from you. I just need fucking help. And they stepped away and then this guy came rushing over and he's like, hey, bro, what do you need? And I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I, I don't think I feel good. And then he, I was like, you know, sometimes I had like sh blood sugar uh, levels that would spike and drop and be a bit sensitive to that. So I was like, I, I think I need something with sugar. So his girlfriend ran inside, got me uh, a muffin. He ran over to some fast food place, got me a, a, a Coke. And I was just like okay okay and i felt like i was getting a little bit back to myself and, and he was just like are you gonna be okay i was like yeah yeah i think so man thank you so much so like that guy was a legend and then i just i just sat there and i was just like i don't know what's going on and then this sort of like panic set in so i called my wife she was you know in netherlands which is half a globe away so and i just called her and she was with friends because it's evening there and I, she's like oh hey baby and i was just like i don't know what's going on i'm like fucking crying and emotional i was like i'm so scared you know i just collapsed and she's like oh no what's you know please stay on the line uh, let me find the nearest hospital for you and she's like okay this is this is the hospital and you know put it in uber and it's set there in an emergency room i had to wait like one and a half hours but you know i was at least in a sort of like safe place so i was just like let's try to process it all you know and then they that they did um they did the they did the scan and they said that i had heart issues and they said stop working right now you have to go home you know yeah you, ha you have to stop you have to go to a safe environment so i booked a flight home and i was in my hotel room at, at tw next to twitchcon and then I, f I fell asleep and then I was just like, and somebody from, uh, I talked to people from Team Liquid uh, and they said to me like, we can have somebody go to your room every one and a half hours if you want, you know, just let us know. So, and then I, and I was like, oh no, it's fine. Cause you don't want to burden people at the same time, even though that would have been great, yeah. you know? 
so then I lay in bed and I thought to myself like, oh, I, um, yeah, I, I, what if, what if, what if something happens? Then I'm over here alone in the hotel room. So, um, and then I was like, okay, so, so it's fine. You know, I did, I did some meditative exercise. I did breathing exercise to keep my breath low because I was just, okay, you know, if my heartbeat gets higher, but then I got a little bit nervous and then I had a dream where I had a heart attack and I died right when I like, yeah, fucking great. You know, so that happened, and then I woke up, and I was super panicked. And then I went to the airport without with a without a whole lot of sleep. And then a friend of mine said, "Aren't you scared to fly now? What if something happens on the plane?" Yeah, thanks, asshole. So now I'm sitting like in stress that whole plane the whole plane ride, and it was just it was horrible, you know. And then I, I come home, and I was just like, "Fuck me." So then, but you know, it's, Did you take uh, then time I had off it all. That? Sorry. Did you take time off after that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I took a lot of time off because this was like at the tail end of, I, I, I started getting these like weird moments already when, when we're, this is right after we started, uh, uh, after we finished our sort of like trip through uh, Central America and Canada and stuff. And even when we're in Canada at the last tail end of it, I had like this spell where I would just like random, like really randomly start crying, you know, and I, I learned a lot about like the psychological behaviors and the, 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 so you know how like when you walk past the door and you bump your elbow into the door, mm-hmm. some days you're like, nah, and some days you want to rip out the door out of its fucking socket and just blast it through the wall because <laughs> you're so fucking mad it happened. So yeah, I, that is a psychological alert from your body that you're going through stress. If you don't do anything, so th- that can happen when you're overworked or whatever. So if you ignore that and you keep working, your body goes into a mode where psychologically your body tells itself like, okay, no, we still need to keep going. There's adrenaline. You might be in danger, right? Like maybe you're running from a fucking wolf or something back in the day. So your body wants to keep going. So what happens when you start crying is the physical reaction. And that's the last layer before you get into a burnout, right? Because then your body physically tries to tell you, stop, please. And that's when you get like emotional that's when, or you, or you can collapse or something. So I've experienced these things and I, I did a lot of work on it, but clearly not enough. And I traveled too much and had jet lags both ways and stuff. So that moment was really for me like, okay, fuck this. You know, I really need to just make a new framework, build a new sort of like frame and, and do, uh, the way I'm going to organize things and just go from there because like, this is just not sustainable, you know? Yeah, I, I don't really, I, I don't know how you poker guys do it because, uh, first of all, the high monetary swings, uh, but second of all, I mean, j- just, just, just the hours and, and everything you have to put in in terms of that. Like, I, uh, I have streams where, uh, you know, I, I start with a chess.com rating of 2650. And mm. um, I'm like, okay, we're going to get to 2750. And within like the first five, six games, you know, I, I can already tell what kind of stream it's going to be. I cannot play more than 10, 15 games. Like, if I'm losing very badly, yeah. it, it's, it becomes a joke. Like, I start joking yeah, yeah. about how I'm going to lose every game. Uh, and then I just become a whiny bitch. And, I, like, I know I'm becoming one, but there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And, then, and then I can't, you know, I can't be my usual sarcastic or abrasive self with the chat because people, it's a cycle. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So you have to constantly then adjust. And, um... You know, it's it's the worst. Like I I I've literally just had streams where I lose seventy five percent of my games against people who I'm I'm five times the chess player they are. I will not name mm. names, but uh, <laughs> and you know then it's like someone will make a joke like yeah maybe you shouldn't play anymore like maybe you should like uh, you know do something else. I say okay, and I'll just like end the stream like literally I'll just mm. click a sub stream and 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 I, to me I'm that kind of person like. You know, you have like older relatives who tell you, oh, you've always been like this and you, you want yeah. to debate it. So my, my grandmother always tells me like my whole life, I've always tried to escape from hard times. I've never, never tried to like dig my feet. And so that's why it's such a release for me. I, I, lo- I can just end the stream and I can just mm. go fuck off and go to the gym or do something, hang out with Lucy downstairs. Um, so it's, it's insane to me, like the, 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 the stuff you guys have to go through in, in, in poker. Um, I think it would just, I mean, it would just absolutely destroy me. I experienced what you just said uh, with raising uh, the puppy. Mm. So we got him the first month. It was like a new experience, you know. Then uh, Lucy left. She was gone for four weeks, roughly. And I never knew I had anger problems 
until I <laughs> until I had to deal with him myself. Like, <laughs> and you know, I like I like he drove me so I wanted to just leave the house. Like I was like, I'm gonna leave you mm. food. Like you can fuck off. You like, I mean, no, the thing. Have you ever raised an animal? No, no, but I've raised a kid. I'm raising a kid. Right, so. right yeah. So, so like, I was gonna actually ask you about that. That, that, that was gonna be my segue. So, like, you know, there's people who say, "Oh, you can't raise a dog. You can't raise a kid." I actually ran into a mom right here in the neighborhood, and she has a, a dog, who's the bigger version of him, eighty pounds, like forty kilo, and uh, she has a baby, and she said raising a dog is like a sprint. It's like insane, but a baby is mm-hmm. a marathon, and it's a, it's a very different experience. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would show up every day downstairs to poop and pee on the floor for an entire month. I, it's just, I mean, there were days he would break out of his gate and diarrhea all over the floor. It, it was, you know, you, you would, he would do things correctly four times and then do them incorrectly twice. A, and he would destroy things. And I'm just like, like, I'm actually losing my mind. I was starting to get, like, I could feel it happening. And I just <laughs> knew that I had to last until my wife got back because... It's like, you know, I have to keep this dog alive. I'm not 100. I'm not 100 sure I want to at this point. You know, now, now, now he's all right. You know, he's he's pretty good. But yeah. oh my god, it was uh, it, it it changed something in me, like chemically in my brain. I, I was never I I never felt like I had a screw loose until I started mm-hmm. dealing with him for a month alone. It was it was unbelievable. I was snapping at everything. Like yeah. everything made me mad. And uh, I think it's also in my probably in my genes. I think uh <laughs> I yeah, but it's, it's I, f- I feel like it's okay to know that as well, right? Like I think that's different approaches, like you say, like how you handle losses and stuff. I mean, one thing about streaming poker, I do think that you touched on something very good is the is the monetary investment, right? And I do want to make very clear for people that like streaming poker is very different from streaming slots. Like you don't get losses from people, uh, uh, oh, yeah. you don't get losses from people back or something, right? It's like. I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a sign up link or whatever. Poker is also a skill game, right? Like the best players in the world win, period. So, um, poker in that sense is it, it is a skill game with a luck factor, but that luck factor can obviously drive you insane if it goes wrong a long time or at very painful moments. Another thing with the luck factor is is that you might be doing something really good that doesn't work out. And when people see it doesn't work out, they're going to, you know, your chat's going to get very toxic sometimes. Like, especially the higher the buy-in of a tournament. If I'm playing a, if I'm playing a $10,000 tournament, then, um, and something goes wrong, then people will react way worse than when I play a $500 tournament and something goes wrong. Yep. Yeah, I don't so, know. It's even your best community likes to see you lose. It's like... A, yes. Uh, that's the thing about Twitch, though, right? Like you like seeing in pain, people in pain as well. Yeah. If somebody that if if there's a Dota guy that I watch a lot, or let's say somebody blunders in chess or something, right? And and, you, and somebody's like, oh no, then you're like, oh, you know, you just want to see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday, yesterday Hikaru had a very tough game at the candidates, and uh, oh, yeah. the chat becomes all that subject. Like yeah. when things are good. Or, you know, he took about eight minutes to, like, resign the game. And he was just sitting there, you know, he- head in his hands. And people in the chat were just, I mean, it was brutal. Like, if you go oh, read yeah. that in hindsight. But but the thing is, they're not serious. Like, it, like you know what I mean? It, it's what I feel. They're not serious. They're the same people who cheer you on when you succeed. Yeah, that's true. But I do feel that in poker, a lot of people are insulted that you would treat money that way. Or oh. let's say I go out on a bluff and I make a really good bluff, like it's it's fully, you know, it, it's the strategy backs it up and it's good. And, you know, they just like, wow, that's a waste of $10,000. And then they get really mad because they start projecting what $10,000 would be worth or what you can do with it or how they would treat it. And, it, 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 you know, and they sort of like automatically say like, oh, because you you bluff, you don't care about the money or something or you bust or like if I'm if I if sorry, my fucking camera does this. In the setup, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it zoomed in. Actually, it looked okay. It, uh, oh, yeah, but, oh, okay. Yes. Well, you know, we can... no, this, this is this is a good yeah, setting. I like this. Uh, so uh, I, so then 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 they take it sort of like personal. What is this fucking moron doing with the money or something? And that that's when it becomes truly really annoying as well because like you're trying to play your heart out. You're showing all your decisions. You're showing your decisions to uh, to to your opponents. Everything right? Like you're you're, you're being completely transparent giving advice to people it's like yeah but poker losing is part of poker like some people will try to say like oh i'm winning tournaments here and there and it's like better for their marketing like i'm deep again here but the dark days are part of poker too and it's really important to tell people that because then they start managing their money better 
uh, managing and they don't think that it's some sort of like dream, you know, dream job. Oh, once you play poker, you just become rich and that's it or something, right? So, um, but yeah, po poker can be a bit frustrating at that time. But I do think that it's really important to remember that poker also offers you a way where if you input a lot of work, you get a lot of financial freedom, right? So, I mean, I started playing poker when I was 20. I was traveling the world when I was 22. I mean, I lived in fucking Las Vegas when I was 24, you know, like it it just gives you, it gives you a lot. It, it can give you a lot of freedom and it, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. And, but it's not an easy road because otherwise a lot more people would do it or, right. or, or succeed yeah. at it. Right. Um, yeah. Cause That's it's not, a, I, I was going to say, but, but you were able to do that because you had success. Yeah. Yeah. And because I, I, I treated it the right way, I learned from my mistakes, you know, I did, I did it, I did it smart in a financial way. And yes, I've also had my periods where I was blasting and I was like young and I didn't give a fuck and I was making a lot of money. And, but I do feel like it's, it's, it's created a really good perspective for me on things. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been playing for 18 years now. Like if I'm still around, I must've done some things in a good way, you know, where you structure things. And I really like that I'm in a position now to talk to people about this because like sometimes people will tell the story. It's like, oh, I was playing and I know I should play lower, but I really like playing this higher buying because people play better. And I was like, no, you just sound like you're addicted to action. You know, just stop mm. fucking playing right now. Or you you can give a lot of tough love to people or like people that are playing break even, you can help them. Uh, also, you know, there's tons of people in my community. When I started streaming, they were playing for fictional money or one, two cents or something. And through just being active in the community and stuff are now professional poker players that travel. You know what I mean? So there's a there's a really cool thing that you can do and it's kind of cool to be in a position to help people uh, get there and help some other people that won't be able to achieve it stay away from it um it's one of the coolest things about being a a good kind of community host right like you've seen people in your chat grow in life yeah uh, it's yeah. crazy i i had people from tw and and you know you you seem like the kind of guy who would recognize usernames recognize people from years ago like i yeah. I got a guy, I have people in my chat who are practicing lawyers that they first pulled up uh, finishing law school. They took the bar, uh, they, you know, it's insane. And like, I, I recognize them. They come back every, every now and then. And, uh, it, it's, it's always fun. Of course you have the regulars, uh, mm. you have the people who like to make the chat about themselves. They constantly bombarding you with questions or it's like, you know, there's a lot of different flavors of viewer, but, uh, uh, yeah, the, it's always fun. Like seeing the people yeah. grow and, um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's definitely cool. I think that's, it's also, I always wanted like, so one of my best friends is the the co-founder of uh, Team Liquid, Victor Gosens, and he, um, he's still, he's still a co acting co-CEO, right? So uh, we used to live together uh, before he did Team Liquid and be, uh, and, or we were really good friends before uh, he even started Team Liquid and before I started playing poker, we knew each other through StarCraft. And then he made, the, he made Team Liquid, which, you know, grew to be like this massive, uh, massive esports organization. And I remember so well, he had six, six people posting on his forum. He just made a, and there was one guy that was being slightly toxic. He just fucking banned him. And I was like, that guy made, makes half the posts on your forum. Like he's a lot of your sort of like liquidity. He's like, I'm not going to base my, base my community on that guy. And then I always thought that that was that. And then Team Liquid became such a good site, such a good community site, you know, now, and that always, that was kind of like the, the thing that I always kept in mind where I always thought about like the way Team Liquid shaped and how big it was and how it was still nice. And I, I really think that I was able to do a similar thing in my community based on, you know, what I learned from him. Um, it's just like, okay, somebody comes in, is a bit toxic, whatever. Okay, cool, dude. Like you donate or whatever, that's not going to buy you a certain position or something, right? So I do think that I have a community where a lot of people feel you know, and this, there's jokes too. It's not like when somebody makes a super harsh joke that they get banned or something. But yeah. if you're just being toxic to people, you're out. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of cool things back and forth. And like you say, like sometimes you'll see somebody, somebody, somebody the other week came in. And I was like, holy shit, where you been? I was like, well, I was in chat a lot because I was in a hospital then because I was uh, on suicide watch. I tried to commit suicide and I made a, a you know, the, somebody saved me and I was, they were, I was being monitored in the hospital. What that's the why I was fuck? in chat all, all day long. Oh and he's like, I tried to kill myself again in the hospital, but then I was watching, we were watching the stream so much and people started talking to me and greeting me. And then people started asking me questions and people said like, hey, we're gonna watch a movie on Netflix, a party watch or something with a couple of you wanna watch. And this guy comes in and he's like, I'm married and I have a fucking baby on the way now. And life is great, you know? It's like, I mean, it even gives me goosebumps thinking about it, you know? It's so like communities can do a lot of things like both harmful and really good. So it's really cool, you know, to try 
and do as much good as you can in that sense uh, online as well. I got a lot of those messages, especially in 2020. Like, uh, yeah. ch chess is one of these things you, you do a lot as a kid uh, and um, it, it reconnects you with like older relatives. So I've gotten everything from, you know, I re reconnected with my dad over chess or mm. yeah, literally like I was suicidal and chess gave wow. me a purpose and chess gave me uh, structure and it's a frustrating game, but I really enjoy it. And I don't know, man, like I, I don't find myself that important on earth to have that degree of an impact on an individual, but we just don't realize it. Like we're just doing our thing. And like you said, people get kind of like bonded to that. And if, if we can do that for some people, that's, I feel yeah. like way, way more than we ever thought we, we, we could do, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah, it's like crazy. It's humbling. Of course, the flip side of that is, uh, <laughs> people get too comfortable and then they think they're friends with you. So it's not like you had a profound impact on their life. So I'll give you an example. I was in Las Vegas in 2021 uh, playing my first chess tournament uh, in like three, four years or three years. And, and I made a big deal out of it. I went there, I started, you know, doing video recaps of my games. And there was a lot of teenagers there, obviously, playing, for the, t playing the tournament. And um, they'd be like, hey, come play some speed chess with us. And I was like, nah, guys, like I'm super tired. I'm gonna go to my room. And they'd be like, nah, come on, don't be a pussy. And I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, you don't know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, don't do that. And, yeah. and pe people do that as well with, uh, I'm, I'm pretty public because uh, Lucy doesn't care so much. Um, but, you know, my, my wife will be like, we'll be hanging out and someone in the chat will like long subscriber, one year subscriber will just write, you know, is your, is your wife going to eat the dog? Because my wife's Chinese. Oh, Jesus. And it's just like, come on, man. Like, what yeah. the fuck? You know what I mean? Like that, some things for me are like one strike. Like you just got too comfortable. Like that, Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, for people listening. They're like, this is the stuff, you know, I got to deal with. And like this person has written 600 messages over a year and a half. It's, I mean, like there's a limit. You know what I mean? Like uh, direct your, your comments to me. Direct your, uh, you know, your, your jokes that you think are funny to me. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not one for yeah. cancel culture, but... It's, uh, it's, it's so weird because sometimes it's like, you know, people are very happy and comfortable and then it, it could also be like a sort of like outlet for bad shit that's happening, right? All of a sudden, online anonymity becomes very appealing again and they start yeah. acting out and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I've had some, yeah, you guys just got some fucked up. I had, um, it's just, it's so weird. Sometimes it gets really close and, you know, I, I showed, um, I was playing poker and, uh, I, uh, there was this dog barking outside in the summer and it was nonstop. Like the owners would put him in the yard and he would just bark all day long and drove me fucking mental. So I, I, I grabbed my webcam, showed the dog. So you only see this, like this little bitch of grass or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I live in a city with 45, 50,000 people. So two days later. I get two gifts in the mail by two viewers that looked at every backyard in the city that I live, found the one that I showed on webcam, estimated how high I live, knew that it was two apartment buildings. So they sent the gifts to both me and the neighbor and saying like, I hope you don't find this creepy. And I was like, well, this gets a little close. You know what I mean? That, that's a little, and that's, a, that, that's with good intent, right? But you know, then <laughs> like, uh, yeah. A week later, or like, it's been happening less lately, which which I'm really glad for, obviously. But it's like, I, I would just get like a message, like, "Hey, good hunting, mate. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find the daycare your son is in. I'm gonna cut him into pieces and I'm gonna put him in the trash bin." It's like, yeah, cool. Streaming's cool. You know what I mean? Wow. It's just, but that is that is you know, like in no way, like I, I fucking love streaming and i love everything that comes with it but the sort of like doxing that that sort you know the 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 threat because like i know who you are but you don't know what my nick who, who's behind my nickname that's something i really hate but that that's been a lot better um especially you know with a family i uh that that's something i really detest obviously <laughs> for good reason um, yeah jesus i mean that's uh that's that that's nuts i i i've had a few i've never had a negative experience like like to to this extent um but i everybody who talks in person uh is 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 very friendly but uh but a few times like um guy in my local pharmacy you know two minutes from my house uh uh you know uh is like hey what's up man i'm like hey and then as i'm leaving the pharmacy the whole way back i'm like making sure he's not following me 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, but New York is kind of like that. I mean, even this morning I was getting coffee and a random guy just like I walk way past him was like, what'd you order? I was like, what mm. the fuck? I was like, I got I got this and this. He, I start. I kept walking. He goes, what, what is that? Like we're, I don't know, 10 meters from each other, you know, like, and I'm like, the fuck? Like, what, what do you want from me? Is New York just that kind of city? Like we, once I walk far enough now, I, now not only the fact that I, I would, uh, somebody would want to know where I live if they knew who I was. So I look, I look back. Um, Lucy and I, we had our house broken into, you know, last year. I don't know. Yeah. If you, yeah. And, and yeah. 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 That was not, we weren't targeted cause it was me. Uh, we're like quite sure. Uh, we have a theory that uh, some of the people who delivered, like our mattress, for example, gave a, you know, told a buddy of theirs who breaks into houses, oh, only two people live here. But that stuff fucks with your head, you know, because the yeah. day that that happened, that was Lucy's first day going back to work in a year and a half because of COVID. Mm. And it just makes you think, like, did they think that I left, but she didn't? Was it a coincidence? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's you just insane. don't know. That's yeah. crazy what you said. By the way, that's actually why I never... Like, I never heard something like that happening to someone, but that's why I never show the outside, like, ever. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. I move my webcam, like, to do push-ups sometimes. I make sure there's nothing in here with a package yeah. on it, because sometimes it's like, a, you know, coffee right there from a, the store. And mm. if you look up the store, like, you could find it. And yeah, uh, yeah that, that stuff is, uh, that stuff sucks. It's really... Yeah, but it's, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, in the end, it is. A, it, it feels like a small byproduct of something that that is very gratifying. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, there, there's there's a lot of positives. Also, like it's for me, it's mostly my family. Like, I don't. I'm not really a scared person. When, when like I if, yeah. I mean, I would not be if somebody. I mean, clearly when somebody. But you know, it's not, not not to make it about that. But it's not like you're gonna run into random guns or something, right? It's like it, it would be somebody if somebody would like do something, but. It's not. It's not something I'm too concerned about. Um, but I just don't like the feeling that it gives my wife either, right? Like if she, if something like that comes in or something, or you know, it's just, it's just like for her, she doesn't spend a lot of time um, online and in in like social media, or she she doesn't do any social media. She doesn't post on Instagram or whatever, and just you know, she has a lot of real life friends, and and so for her, that that's just like what, you know, that's. That that's just so. I was like, well, you know, people say really fucked up stuff on the internet, and uh, you know, nine out of ten dogs that uh, that bark don't bite. But you know, it's all about that. The one time it could be wrong, it's gonna be very wrong. You know what I mean? But look at this shit like that, uh, like what Amarant had. Yeah, uh, I saw that. that right? Was not, that that or or the the message that like Sweet Anita gets or something when she goes to TwitchCon. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, really yeah, fucked. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, women have it a hundred times worse. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> let's be honest uh for 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 obvious reasons uh and um do you think uh uh do you think your your wife being the way she is uh kind of like l like leads to a more like healthy and sustainable relationship like lucy is kind of the same way um in the sense that she's she's not a, like she's not an influencer like she okay she likes her instagram she likes her tiktok whatever so so, so do like most people so do i but um mm. I mean, she's like trying to, you know, be a data scientist. Like she has like a full-time profession. Um, she's okay appearing on stream every now and then, and, and, and she does. But, um, uh, you know, if we were both influencers, I mean, who the hell knows, right? Like it, 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 we have a very nice dynamic. Like, do you think you have the same thing? It's like, it's why it's like successful and, you know, you can both yeah. kind of. I think that in general, I don't think like in general, I think that's like everybody, everybody has a sort of like match. So, you know, sometimes people could be like, well, I really need you to be part of my world in that sense. And I really, I really need you to know and, and be around and whatever, because otherwise it feels like I'm doing it alone. But for me, it's really nice that, that, that she isn't uh, in, in like the online space or a streamer or a poker player or something. It, it, I don't know. I've, I've always kind of felt like poker also was kind of like the, 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 the thing I'm doing alone. Uh, mm -hmm. even at poker tournaments, I would like, you know, bring friends from back in the day. I still have all my friends from when I was like five to 10 years old. That's the people I talk to and hang around with. And, um, you know, they're, they're it's, I, I would bring, I would bring them to poker stops or I'd hang out in small groups. I didn't really like like the 16 people dinner, the dinners with like lots of people. And it's also fine, right? If you, if you, if you, if you like it where it's hot and happening and you love like exchanging strategies with people who just want tournaments and like, oh, that's, you know. 
I don't I've never really liked that. It's also like when I when I look at some like big stream things that are happening, you see people fighting for attention on the camera and stuff, and I'm just really I, I'm just I'm just happy that I'm hanging out with people a lot and then I'm married to somebody that doesn't really give a fuck. Doesn't really care, yeah. you know. That it's like nice, I'm glad you have a passion and I'm glad that and she appreciates and respects what I'm trying to achieve and I'm competitive and stuff, but if if I would be at some like fucking IRL stream doing crazy shit where she doesn't even recognize the person that I am, then I would hope that she would tell me to fuck off or something, you know? <laughs> I like yeah. that. It's just, you know, it's just I don't know. It's it's it feel I don't know. I'm not trying to shit on people that, that do it, but it's it that that to me is like I, I think I'd rather stop streaming, you know, which sometimes is a trap because uh like I should definitely be collaborating more, right? Like mm -hmm. I've always felt like we have a really good connection. And it's something where you know, I have a good connection with you or Hikaru or Dota streamers or something. And there's people that I've that I've organically found out that I have a good connection with or something, right? Or but I I should do more stuff like collaborating. Also, because not just and especially not just because it fits like a narrative of like, oh, it's good for growth and visibility, which is all fucking great and nice, but I would never do it just before that. But if you also feel like you have a good connection with somebody, now you're just also having fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you're doing fun stuff. Now you're creating new experiences now i'm getting to know more about chess you know i played chess when i was very young and i played chess with my grandfather and my father passed away and i have a lot of chess memories with him and it's like all this like chess was always very important to me uh when i was young and that's a cool like i could i could kind of sort of like reinvent that i could do stuff maybe i can learn a little bit it's kind of i always feel like chess is a gangster skill to have like if somebody can whip out whip out a board and you know you can just destroy the whole fucking room nobody's going to beat you like i feel like it's a it's a street cred thing i truly do if you, if you play chess really well so kind of cool skill to have you know and it's a good social skill as well it breaks the ice with some people or if you're celebrating christmas at my wife's family and there's like one uncle you haven't really connected with and you play a game of chess against him and you know it opens some sort of like doors in that sense so it, that's something that i should be doing but i really feel like sometimes i'm so put off by how much people are trying to politic within streaming and trying to get themselves somewhere that I'm so put off by it that I don't do it at all because then I'm just like, oh, fuck that, you know, because it's just not me, even though there's a big portion of it that could be me. Yeah, well, I think there's a, there, there's a whole area of streaming that uh, basically is on like the front page of live stream fail. And, you know, it was yeah. said this about that person and uh, we, we dabbled, like they came over to, to chess for a bit for pog champs and, but yeah. more often than not, they're basically playing like the hottest game and they're still, they still have massive viewership and that, that's uh, all this like living together in a house stuff. Like that stuff never really interested me. Um, I kind of really like having a home base uh with with lucy and just gosh I, I don't even like to go outside that much i mean like i i mean like in social stuff i, I just mm. like this is i my profession is talking so by the time it's time to like you know uh i, I like to just lay on the couch and watch master chef or, or peaky blinders or whatever you know like i, yeah, 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 yeah. I which is what we're doing recently so i um i get it i get it um also uh i i tend to get really tired when I do collabs with people because more often than not it's not that I don't like them it's as you said I, I don't like I barely know the person and so uh like in this case it's like pretty different because I I don't yeah like you're right I just I'm like oh like you're you're a, you're a cool fucking guy I still told you I think before we started recording like you said you know thank you for inviting me on I'm like Dude, you're like I still I still massively look up to people like you. You know, I I had Fader holds on. I hope there's like no beef there. But uh, you know, like like I, I look, I've seen you guys on YouTube videos, like you know, uh, playing high stakes poker. Like it just still blows my mind that we even evolved to a game that we can have any sort of like street cred. I kind of felt a little intimidated by some of those big streamers, but in more of like a like oh my god, you know, you have a you have a crazy stream way. It's it's different. Like when I just big big picture. Um, mm -hmm. Even with chess creators, like no disrespect to my fellow chess creators, but anytime I collab with them after two hours, I'm exhausted. Like, yeah, and, I hear you. and the only person with whom that's kind of an exception maybe is, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, I'm, I'm very good friends with Eric Rosen. I don't know who, if, if, mm -hmm. if you know who that is, yeah, yeah. but like we talk like a couple times a week. So it's very different. Um, but with the rest of them, they're great people. But yeah. Something, some extrovert died in me in the last few years, 
and I can't do it anymore. Like I just can't, you know, uh, I'm gonna give you a hypothetical example. Uh, you're at the grocery store, all right? So you, uh, you know, your wife, you just like bought, bought some stuff. You walk to the cashier. She starts talking. Like, you guys have any plans today? Like, what are you guys doing today? What are you guys doing the rest of the day? I will just shut the fuck up. Like, I am not responding <laughs> to you. Thank God Lucy is here. She's going to handle it. Like, I can't do that stuff. I just, I don't, I don't have the energy. And it's like, I don't know if it's New York rudeness. Lucy handled a 10-minute conversation with this lady. She asked us everything from, oh, wow, you're buying pizza crust? What are you going to put on it? Wow. Like, shut up! <laughs> like, yeah, I can't, yeah. you know what I mean? But, like, so would you do the talking there? Would you? No, I mean, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that example because, like, my wife Mirtha, she she really she really taught me how to small talk, like be 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 relaxed about it, and I actually find a lot of those, a lot of those little conversations like very relaxing now. I used to be very much sort of like efficient, also in the way I would talk over WhatsApp or something to people, but I I do really like just like relax, smile, just ask another question or something when something takes a little while or. You know, renovating a house and just go over there and you know there's a team of people painting and just like strike up on a conversation it's like oh you know you're gonna do something this weekend so i might be one of those people where i would ask you a question now and you're like what the fuck but you know <laughs> i haven't learned it, that skill yet that's all it is uh, yeah. it's just i don't know it is it is it is it is weird you know like where i think that a lot of people a lot of people that spend a lot of time behind a computer uh, are more introverted and I think that introverted people can be super social and can have really good conversations with other people, but it is just more tiring for them than um, extroverts. And it's just like, that, that's kind of what, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because like collaborating, it, just the, the thought of setting it up, making sure we're both there, making the scenes and then have, and then and like all that, it just sounds like very intense to me. I just like doing my own thing, but at the same time, you know, if you, I, I also feel there's a trap when you're more introverted that you can make that world sort of smaller and smaller because every single time that feels more natural. And then, you know, I started reading a little bit about, um, I, I got like, before I would be fine talking to like a room of people or something. And I feel like sometimes when, you know, the online poker grind and then um, uh, 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 the, the streaming grind, and then I have my own live event, Lex Live. And I was there and it's all people that watch my stream that are super nice to me, that care for me, you know, and I would have to do like this sort of like intro to 80 people. And I felt like I was going to pass the fuck out. And I was just thinking to myself, like, why? And then I started talking to the same guy. He's like a mastermind in terms of like uh, communication, but also how your sort of like natural self can progress or behave in certain instances, right? In a very, very efficient sort of like practical way. So he would just say, um, well, you know, and he, he advised me to read more about stoicism. And I thought about stoicism and I thought, well, those are just dudes that try to cancel out their feeling. That's not me. I'm a very erratic, emotional person, Sto right? Stoicism? Yeah. So I just thought like, oh, stoicism just means, and I was just thinking about like, you know, I, I had Latin in school and these were all the dudes that if somebody would die, they'd just be like blank face, you know, because I don't, I don't have any emotion. But then I realized that stoicism is not letting emotions govern your actions. And that a lot of stoic people that practice stoicism, they have a sort of like, if you're, if you're like a true fucking legend at it, then you have an anti-bucket list. What are the five things that I would dread most in life and I'm gonna do those? So actually, and then I started reading this book called by Ryan Holiday, Obstacle is the Way. And it just, it just means that it's really enriching to your life when you conquer certain things and you make certain hurdles. So now I'm actually trying to think more like, okay, I really need to do stuff that I'm not comfortable with and, and see if it's something that I'd like to do. So now I'm, you know, I'm thinking about um, doing this Dota tournament because that's a big passion of mine, doing a Dota tournament, putting up a prize pool, letting people battle 1v1, just do commentary with it. And it's something that sounds exhausting and terrifying in a, in a, in a way, like terrifying is a wrong word because it's not where I'm like nervous in that sense. But, and now I just feel like, okay, I should just really start trying to do stuff like that, you know? And, um, and, uh, and you know, and I can say like, oh, I don't like, I, I, I don't want to collaborate, or I don't want to be like, you know, like when fucking ten people in a room are singing along to a song, and the person in the back doesn't get enough fucking attention, so they whip out some like big fucking trumpet and and pretend to play trumpet, and somebody pretends to fall down, and like all that stuff. When I watch it, makes me it makes me fucking mad. Actually, <laughs> that's how much I hate it. So I can I can keep hating on that, or I can just collab with people that I like and do fun stuff and learn about new things. You know what I mean? So. At a certain point, I need to just like pop the bubble and just think to myself, okay, like stop fucking hating 
and just see what I want to do and ignore the rest, right? And in that sense, collaborating is something that I would definitely want to do more. Does that uh, philosophy apply to things that you are deathly afraid of, not just uncertain of? For example, I uh, refuse uh, to get uh, blood tests. Like I got the I got the COVID vaccine, but um, I actually my first dose I went alone because I was like, oh, I've only ever been afraid of blood draws. I don't really get scared of of uh, injections. Um, and I I I went, you know, he did it. I you know I hyper focus on it. You know, it, I'm like, oh, okay, but it's over now. I go sit in observation. I fainted. I've never fainted mm. in my life. Maybe similar to what you experienced. Like I I was sitting there and my head felt heavy. My ears started ringing. And I was yeah. like slow and I got offered some water. And then the next thing I know, I woke up and I had spilled my water all over myself. It looked like I pissed my pants. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> like I was literally in public with my whole like pants, everything soaked. Or who knows, maybe I did piss myself, but I also spilled water on myself. And I mean, I just literally fainted in the middle of a pharmacy. Like, uh, so the second dose, my mom went with me. Yeah. And I said, hey guys, can you like flatten some cardboard? I'm going to lay down after. And I did, I got my shot and I laid on the ground, like I, you know, recovering, uh, uh, because I get such a, it's called like a va vasal vagal response, something. It's like, you just go right. into a panic. I mean, basically. And, uh, so can I do this thing that you just described for that? Or is this like a different problem? I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a fucking doctor, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I, I think that, I think that sort of phobias are a different thing for yeah, behavioral yeah. psychologists to get over and you have like sound therapy and and other things and stuff. So I just, I don't know. It, 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 it might, it, it might be, but I don't, you know, I think that, I think that this kind of works for like social anxiety or, but I, I really do think that I've just made my world sort of smaller in that sense. Like I see my friends a lot. I see my family, we go barbecue, we have a little cabin, friends come over. Like, you know, it's not, it's not like in that sense, but in terms of like, like how the fuck am I not able to just do do a five minute talk? Like, hey, the bar is open. You can play fucking ping pong, and we're gonna play some cards later. I hope you guys have fun. If there's anything, just hit me up. You know, like, like how do I got to a point where that gives me anxiety? You know, that's that 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 it is. It's very interesting. So, uh, you know, and I think also one of the problems is that as soon as I fix something, sort of that you can fall back into old behavior. Then I did some stuff where I was like, I, I would, I would write like a weekly thing. What am I really dreading this week? And it could oh. be, it could be, it could be something practical. It could be, I'm not, I'm not great with, I'm not, I'm not an explorer when it comes to technology. Like if somebody has like a multicam setup, I'm not somebody that thinks like, Oh, Hey, let's fucking test this out. And I get the camera. I'm like, Oh, this is nice. I'm going to YouTube some software. Oh, this is cool. Oh, there's a new OBS plugin. Like, fuck that. You know, it's yeah, just, yeah. I fucking hate it. But, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm better at executing or using it or thinking of ideas with it. But then, and then, and then I talked to, I talked to somebody and they had a really interesting conversation to like break up the process. Not, I would put on a to-do list or something like install a second webcam and make the scenes or something, you know? And then he's like, just put on your to-do list, open the box, just open the fucking box. And that, that gave me such a, that was such an eye opener. I would just do open the box. And then when the box is open, you're like, oh, there's only one thing and one cable. Okay, now I might as well plug it in or something. And even if you then think like, okay, well, you know, then you might be like, okay, now install the software four days later or something. So I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I know I got there, but yeah. No, I, 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 listen, I, I agree. I, especially on the technical side, I, like I told you, I, I'm a big believer in work smart, not hard. So, uh, mm. at least the, that's how I justified uh, copying people's homework in college. Um, yeah. but, uh, no, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's all, it's all part of the grind. I think w one of the difficulties I have, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it, it's on the technical side, but like I said, it's, it's mostly just, I, I think it's, especially as you, I can't really say get older cause mm -hmm. you're, you're older than me. Like, like you have much more life experience with this, but one thing I'm going through at 26 is, uh, I've had like, I'm the kind of person who's had five, six close friends his whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, I am really bad at forging new friendships, especially because like the, the walk of life I have, it's like almost impossible. Um, I, but I also experienced it after college. Like I do not keep in touch with a single person after four year university. Like, I don't know if you have mm -hmm. college friends. I know you said you, you, you dropped out like to play poker, but 
uh, I don't keep in touch with a single person. And I went to college for four years. I probably met thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of nuts. Um, and so as you get older, your close knit group of friends, you know, one drops off. Uh, and I haven't spoken to, to that guy. I mean, maybe Same since man. high school. Um, people change. Like people start liking different things. They start saying different things they start and if any of my close friends are listening right now i'm not really talking about any of you specifically <laughs> there's like four of you so you know people just like all of a sudden six months have gone by and you just yeah. you haven't seen a, a person or whatever um and uh, it's like right now i would say the the friends that i'm most active with in terms of uh, communicating or seeing are, are lucy's friends like her co-workers mm. or i play tennis with some of the, the guys we go to the gym or whatever and um I'm super grateful for that, but it's uh, it's weird, you know. Like that's the kind I like socializing with people who 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 don't know who I am and don't look at me like a god. And you mm. can't you can't get a whole lot of that right now uh, because if I run into someone on the street, it's like they literally saw like the president. I mean, like, sometimes like people just they like they malfunction. Their hands are shaking trying to take a selfie with me. I'm like, dude, I'm just a normal fucking guy. Like it's not, you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. need to it doesn't. I don't like that because, you know, um, uh, I, I was invited to like a couple of even local chess uh, things in New York City. There's random in Manhattan and Queens and people are like, oh, like you should like uh, make a trip and stop by. And I, I would, I would totally do it. But I, the anxiety of being like a petting zoo animal mm. kind of like dissuades me. And you, like, you, we talked about it. It's, it's, it's part of the job. It's part of, and, but I... I just like to be treated like a human sometimes, you know, I, like just play some tennis with me, you know, like watch me struggle yeah. lifting this heavy weight, you know? Uh, yeah, it's and- a, I mean, it's a, it's a paradox too, right? Because like you're, you're then an introvert that becomes open to a lot of conversations that you normally, it, it's weird that you choose like a profession, right? How that can go. I mean, I have the same thing where you choose a profession that at first is like a very grind that you can put yourself in and then you start streaming it and you become more public, but you also like that. But uh, doesn't the camera feel like a single person? That that's to me. I feel like I'm talking to a single person because it's one camera. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like you know if there's three, four, five thousand people watching or something. I just don't feel that way. And but then you're at a live event and you're like, ah, <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, I've never done uh, any like uh, TwitchCon or or stage event. I don't know how I would do. I, I have a. F- I have a, that's one of the things I think I want to try at some point in my life is a live event or some sort of uh, live audience, uh, stand up comedy. But I think I'll be shitting my pants. I'll probably have to like take some shots of alcohol or, mm. or, or God knows what. Um, but well, some stuff is actually legal where you are. It's yes. not, it's not fully legal here yet. We're get we're getting there, but we're right. more interested in taking away women's rights on that note. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't have to open up that can of worms. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you another thing that I want to try at some point, and I, I'm, I was really like thinking uh, about this for a while, is like chess boxing or just like an element of combat. Yeah. So I, I think you know where I'm going with this, but I had no idea this even happened until about an hour ago when just for fun I was like looking if I knew your backstory and stuff. Apparently, the guy who showed you how to play online poker, you fought him in a kickboxing match that was like broadcasted. What the fuck is that story? Can yeah, you take so, me through that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, there, um, I mean, technically, he's one of the people that definitely had a big influence on me. So, it's uh, uh, Bertrand Elke uh, Grospelier. He's a StarCraft legend, um, insane StarCraft player. I've always known him my whole poker life because out of the StarCraft scene, and he was really good friends with Victor, who's one of my best friends, you know, the Team Liquid guy. And uh, so Victor's the one that actually got me started on poker saying like, hey, you should play because I found a video game that you can make money with, which was poker. And then Elki was one of the people who always played a few levels higher than me in poker. So he would always like give me advice or help or whatever. Um, and at a certain, like we became really competitive. We lived with each other for a little bit in Holland and we were always competitive. So we wanted to do, we, we'd play bet games in pool or do stuff. We did a bench press bet or so we did a weight loss bet, you know, like all this kind of weird shit. Um, this is then, normal in poker, by the way. I noticed you guys yeah. love betting over fucking anything. Yeah. It takes a bigger shit. Like, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people think it's actually stupid gambling, but I think that a lot of it's really fun. Like, if you are after a long trip 
and you're with four people and you all put in two hundred dollars to see whose suitcase comes off first or you know or the last person has to pay the last person's suitcase to come has to pay everybody a hundred dollars that looks like it's stupid or you don't have respect for money but it's zero ev gambling right you're gonna lose as much as you win it's like literally if you do it 400 times you end up with zero dollars won or lost right so it is just like but there's also like skill bets and propositional bets so you know i think i can lose 20 kilos in a month and then people will bet or there, there's there there's a lot of little bets or like even like there's some really crazy ones where people would bet which ice cube would melt first for a lot of money or uh, some some guy had to stand in the ocean uh, for 24 hours and they bet a hundred thousand but then they could get two to one on the money if the other guy was allowed to attract sharks with flesh in the water and stuff like that like that sort of crazy st- so you have a full range right <laughs> so um i so me and elke uh we were playing we were uh and in, in barcelona at a poker tournament and um we're both on the terrace and i was kind of sort of like drinking a beer while playing online, lots of people were playing on their laptops and stuff because, you know, people just grind it a lot and that's how you bond over poker, right? So people were playing online, people were just looking at each other playing and and I was playing really high at that time and I said, uh, and I played a $40,000 buy-in game and I was playing on my laptop and Elke was partying with some friends and um, he was running around sort of like he got super hyper, you know, like like manic drinking, which, you know, everybody has those nights. He was having a lot of fun and he, he like runs past my laptop and he, he sort of like unplugs it, which made, gave a pop up while I'm battling this fucking guy for tens of thousands of dollars. I was like, okay, yo, come on, you know, I'm, it's fine, but, you know, not watch the laptop or whatever. And then he knocked over something that almost uh, spilled a drink over my laptop and my friend's laptop. And my friend said, like, Elky, just sit down or I'm going to deck you or something, you know, not like a, a, a tough guy thing, but like mm-hmm. really like, hey, come on, stop, you know? So he's like, he turns around and he's like, well, you think you can beat me? And he was like manic drinking, like confidence. I was like, what do you mean fighting? He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, of course I can dude." It's like, so he was just like, no, you can't. And I said, so I stood and I said, if, if you can kick me in the face right now, then I'll, I'll trust you that you have some sort of athleticism to fight or whatever. So he kicked me in the elbow. So I was like, no chance. So then he's like, oh, you want to bet? And I was like, yeah, I want to fucking bet. And then he's like, okay, so let's do it. And I think this was at a period where we both needed some sort of like, where we, where we did some sports back in the day or something. And at least I did a lot. And then I, I spent a lot of time behind my computer and I felt like my body was breaking down at 24 or something. So um, I think we both needed something, a healthy motivator. So uh, I said, okay, so let's bet. He's like, how much you want to bet? So I was like, I don't know, 30,000 euros. He's like, okay. And it's like, okay, but then we're going to seriously train. I was like, okay, let's do it in like half a year or something. And then half a year later, um, we wanted to do it in Vegas. And then Vegas, we had to do so many fucking tests to even be able to have the fight. We had to postpone it. So I said, hey, uh, you want? I want to postpone it because this is too much to go through. But to show that I really want to fight, let's up the bet. So we upped it to 50K. Then we upped it to 100,000 euros later. Um, wow. And I actually, I, I started training in this kickboxing gym. Man fucking hell like the uh, my my coach passed away in the meantime so rest in peace but he that man was an animal i would just get to the gym the first day and i was there he didn't give a fuck if i would show up he was not some celebrity fucking trainer some personal trainer he's like you're gonna come in you're gonna train with the rest of us you owe me 20 percent of your purse because you're a professional fucking fighter now i don't give a fuck if you stay or if you if you, if you come show up next week i'm not looking for a fucking payday i'm not gonna coddle you i was like yeah that's all fine you know that's all good so First time I got to practice, he's like, he's like, okay, let's say, you know, we did some strength training, some conditioning. He's like, okay, fine. You know, it's like, he's, you're pretty shit. Your, your conditioning sucks, but you know, you're some fucking nerd. So he's like, okay. So he's like, okay, let's do some boxing. And I was like, oh, I don't have a mouth guard with me. So he's like, no, no, we're just going to shadow box. I was like, okay. And we put on gloves and the, and he, 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 he's like, okay. And he put this, 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 this timer yeah, yeah. and he goes, Dah! and he's boom, just locks me in the face immediately. And I was like, what the fuck? So he just walks up to me. He starts shoving me, punching me, throws me on the floor. And it's like, it's a stand-up sport, right? It's not fucking MMA. <laughs> throws me on the sport, starts raining down on me, starts throwing boxing bags on me, puts me against the wall, punches me in the face. I was like, I get like, shit, beat the shit out of, right? I get super aggravated. I try to hurt him. I start fucking kicking him, try to kick him in the nuts and stuff. I thought it's like, fuck, it's, you know, I need to survive here. So, so he, and then he, um, at the end of the training, he's like, if you're hard enough to come back tomorrow, I'm going to make sure that nobody can ever do that to you again. And I just went home and I had my lips were bruised. I had black eye, like my nose was swollen, like everything was fucked, you know? And I was just, and I, I spent like 15 minutes in the car the next day. And I was like, am I really going to go into this fucking gym? And I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So 
then I bounced back. So we trained for like one and a half, two years at the kickboxing fight. And uh, yeah, I ended up winning, which is great. But the whole trajectory there was one of the best experiences of my life. You know, one of the things that taught me the most. That's one thing I'm super curious about, like this whole, uh, the whole training thing, you know, uh, it, actually that's something that does give me anxiety, signing up for a physical combat gym and just mm. walking in like a beginner. Cause I have no idea what to expect. So hope I, I doubt this is going to no, happen. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I doubt no, it. this, this is definitely, I don't, this is not the typical, I think one of the coolest things about, you know, even the guys that like, if you go to American top team or something, right? Like where, where Masvidal and, and Dustin Poirier and stuff in UFC train. You can go to that gym and sign up beginner level and start learning there. And there might be a time where you're where you're there for a year. You might end up in some sort of like sparring situation with Dustin Poirier, you know. But he's anybody that does it professionally, any gym that's good at least, mm -hmm. if you go to a gym and they let you they let you be beat up by somebody, I mean, this guy clearly knew, my trainer clearly knew from my friend what I was signing up for and what I needed to do. And I need to get tough and I need to get tough fucking fast right so yep. he he knew that he prepped me this same way but if you go to a gym and they put some guy that that's already fighting professionally up against you and he, he beats you you can turn around and leave because that gym is just no good but in every single gym everybody will lower their level to right above yours just to, just to punish you but punish you in a way that you can handle right like if, if you just start out you're going to keep your hands very low and they say like put your hands up and if you and it's like oh, put your hands up put your hands up and then the fourth time they'll just like tap you on the forehead you know what i mean it's just like and it, it might be the first time that you make some sort of like contact like being punched it's just like boom and then you're like okay but they won't just you know just go for it or something so it's just i don't know i always felt like there was a, a lot of code and a lot of uh, respect and stuff in gyms and it's actually something i miss a lot that sort of like brotherhood that you can have with the the people there you know and it's uh yeah, I would I would heavily advise you to do something if it's interesting to you, you know. And there's uh, there's no fucking way if a gym has any decent sort of rep that it's like uh, Sylvester Stallone. You're gonna walk in there, you have to beat fucking pigs or something, you know. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I I've been I'm actually a bit concerned on the on the head trauma, you know, especially if it's only boxing, if it's like chess boxing, like mixed yeah. martial arts. I, I'm a huge fan of the UFC, so I I, I would love you know. I would love if a guy threw a punch at me and I just duck, took him down, you know, beat beat the mm. shit out of him. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is with your hands and your feet. So uh, yeah. I think that's one thing that actually seriously concerns me in terms of chess boxing. But um, to be honest, I, I mean, I, you have to do a lot. You have to do a fucking lot of it to get, you know, I mean, of course, there's always a fucking random punch that can hit something. But the the main thing is damage over repetition right it's just like accumulated damage is what the real problem is with boxing and especially in boxing right also because half the strikes will go towards your head and uh, on top of that people fight 150 amateur fights before they become pro so you're gonna have like some insane record and then you you start going pro and then they go full on in sparring and stuff and i mean i think in mma if you look at the, the amount of stuff that you get on your head and then the sparring is so much lighter, right? Like we did pretty full contact sparring. I've definitely seen stars sometimes and I've got like full on kicked in the face here and there, but that's also because I had to become competition ready, right? And it, it, you're just, if you fight on the same level where you're a beginner, let's say you do the, 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 the creator boxing and the creator clashes and stuff like that, you're gonna fight against other people that haven't been training long. There's no fucking way somebody can generate the power to really that that has to be like winning the lottery in a negative way if you if you truly get head trauma from it, you know. I th I still think that yes, of course, there's always a chance you get hurt, but the chance is so small, especially because they do it with helmets on, right? The amateur helmets, which is great. Um, oh no, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. Right? It's uh, it's I no no protective gear. I, I mean, it would be really nice if there was, but I, I don't even. <laughs> does that stuff help? Is that, yeah, 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 it yeah. It helps tremendously. Because your head yeah. doesn't rattle. Yeah, yeah, it, oh. it, it it prevents a lot of brain rattling, and it's it it's it's a it's a huge difference, huge. Oh wow! Uh, I thought but... I thought it I thought it might not be because you know, like in the NFL here, we have uh, uh, we have like the problems with the helmets, like the difference between yeah. rugby and the NFL. Yeah. So, but you're saying for boxing, it actually does it, the the way it's designed and everything. It's yeah, it's... it just helps, and um, yeah, it's something that I definitely because we so we actually you know the fights on YouTube that I did with uh, the other poker player. It's on YouTube, and this is like a long time ago. This is 2011, so this is, I think, yeah, this, this is 11 years yeah, ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's a long time. I think that it could obviously be a bigger deal to do something like that now, but I don't know. It's also hard. Like, 
I mean, I pretty much gave up so many things. To tra- I, I trained seven times a week and I had to drive. Uh, like it, it took up like four hours of my day. I just wouldn't have the time really to do it in that sense. But then, you know, it, to do it against somebody else would be fun. But also like since my trainer passed away, like he, he I kind of felt like that, 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 that was a thing that was very valuable in my life and really mm. big. But that was put to bed when, when he passed away. You know, that was like, I would not really want to do it without him again. Because we right. went on a journey together, it was very intense, and he had like uh, he had definitely had some sort of, uh, you know, I, my dad was alive, and I was in good contact with my dad, but he was so such a different person. He was definitely an important male influence in my life in in terms of a lot of stuff that he taught me in code and sort of like honorability and you know like all the he was a true sensei for me in that sense. So like seriously, like a Mr. Miyagi kind of vibe. Where I, I learned a lot from him. So he was shot and killed, and that that for me was just kind of like holy shit. What he didn't die of old age. No, no, he, he, yeah, he, he, yeah, he got like, yeah, like with, yeah, just completely Lovely. like shot, like, um, just that this, this, there's this, yeah, it, because a friend of him was mixed up in some bad stuff and they wanted to get to that friend and they just like machine gun style, just literally just open the van and start spraying kind of shooting really fucked so this type of stuff happens in the netherlands well i mean this is not i mean this is like this was like sort of like a a a top level once in a once in a two three year thing you know what i mean so it's like this was on it like i remember i was on the couch like this was like national fucking what the fuck happened here like this so to say like this happens like it really doesn't you know what i mean like none of none of my friends have ever seen a gun in real life none and there's nobody that's ever been robbed with a gun or whatever it's like that stuff really doesn't happen here but if you're gonna Whoa. if you're gonna have people from a criminal circuit or something and they do like high level shady shit and then you're sort of like collateral damage and that yeah then yeah so but yeah i was really fucked up like i was on the couch and and i i, I kept like my phone blew up and it was just like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i can't i can't believe it i can't believe it i just saw it on the tv i had no idea what happened yet and I literally, I was sleeping on the couch and I turn on the TV and the first thing I see is my trainer just sitting like dead in the car, just like that. I was just like, wow, that, that, that really fucked me for like. Yo, yeah. that's insane. That's like some movie stuff. That's, yeah, it's I really mean, fucked. It, oh my yeah. God. Was he Dutch? Yeah, yeah. And oh, it's, wow. it's really fucked because like, I also knew, like I knew exactly, you know, like he, he gets to his car. I knew exactly you. That's normally when he would call like, hey, Lex, how you doing? How are you feeling? Everything good? How did poker go? Uh, how you feel from training? Any sore spots? You know, like, you know, like that sort of stuff. So I know the kind of mood that he was in to just like that moment. It's just so crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, oh, my God, man. That's uh, I don't even know what to say. I, yeah, I, no, I know. I don't mean like this is not like meant to be uh you know, it's, it's something that obviously I, 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 I think about, I think about this guy like two, three, four times a week still, but you know, it's not, it's not meant to, to, to take this some kind of dark turn. I know it's a, a bit hard to respond to that kind of stuff, but you know, I put it, it, it has peace in my mind and you know, it's, it's something that it's, it's actually something that I was able to turn into, into motivation as well. Things that he would say, things that he would think is important, the way he was always like looking out for my health and stuff. So, you know, whenever I feel like I need to get more healthy, it's a good it's a motivator for me. So I do feel like, you know, that a piece of him lives with me in that sense, but it's, it's, it's the, the most important thing about stories also, or sorry, in, in this setting was just that it's really hard for me to compete in something like that because it's such a closed chapter. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, yeah. I would imagine that a hundred thousand euros also was quite nice. Yeah, that was really nice. And I also made side bets with his friends as well. They weren't they weren't thinking I was going to do it. And I actually did less bets. So I won like 30,000 euros off his friends as well. But I did less bets because everybody was like, he was very public with his training. And he was like, oh my God. And he would train at these poker tournaments in the gym. And he would have sparring with some poker player that also did boxing. Wow. He broke his ribs. And people were like, wow, this guy looks fucking insane. And <laughs> I mean, and this that's and that. not and a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like... Oh well, maybe there's something to it. And my trainer's like, "No, you're gonna fuck. Trust me. Like I've seen the I've seen the tape. I think you're much more athletic in terms of like the way you pick up stuff." He's like, "I know you train hard. Like you kick hard. Whatever. Like you have a good game plan. Like I I really think like, you're gonna do this." Like, and I was I was just like, "Yeah, but you know, like everybody, people are." And I was just like, "Okay, let's let's put a hold on the bets because I also didn't want to, you know, like you don't want to, you know, 130 thousand euros is a lot of money already. So, yeah. um, I just thought, okay, this is fine like this, and then I yeah." And that's fine, but the fight went really well. So, 
I mean, you know, if you if you if you train like that, and I feel like he had more of a trainer that was coddling him, you know, like this is my celebrity client. Yeah, yeah, good job, man. Wow, great, wow, wow, strong kick. This is a different in preparation, you know. Yeah. It's like uh, it's it's, yeah. it's important, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting though. Like when you see all the, especially like what what Jake Paul is doing and shit, like he, like uh, even more so than Logan, right? Because Jake is doing it really in like a non-exhibition very rough like people want to fucking kill me in the ring kind of way and i really 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 respect what he's doing i think that i think that people don't realize like how much how much grit it takes to actually get in there in the public eye against people like you can say whatever you want about the people that he's fought but i mean they still knocked out people cold right Mm -hmm. and he's getting in the ring and they want to fucking destroy him and people want to see him fail and he's putting on the event that like i don't know I, i have a huge amount of respect for that and sometimes I think like, well, you know, if I could try like f- through poker, I have a lot of affinity with martial arts. I've done kickboxing before. I could get on the card maybe. Like, you know, I understand it's like, like I'm not, I don't think I'm a big deal or something, but I do think I could provide some sort of value to the event uh, in, in some way. And I've done it before, but, you know, I don't know. When I see it, I also just kind of think like, I would really want to train for it, you know? That's... I'm not, I'm not as happy-go-lucky that I could just think like, oh, I'll just train for a month get some lessons and then go on fucking the biggest twitch channel or something and, and box somebody else that's that's see that's the thing that that would be my uh m- my approach would be if if uh if somebody said okay there's a chess boxing event in six months i would basically just dedicate time mm. every single day to that like i would want to yeah. get so good that there was no doubt in my mind uh that i would uh, that i would win and yeah. i would do it in uh in emphatic fashion um so um, <laughs> so you don't even have to do it anymore right because you already know yeah no i mean and to make a statement i mean i would i would love to knock someone the fuck I, having said that i have enough anxiety i would be deathly concerned about you know their health and safety and but i feel i feel like there's a there's moments in your life you like grow up and uh you know uh it, it could be you know the, the the passing of a relative it could be some crazy fucking event like you're Longtime coach, you find out on the national news he gets shot, which is, I mean, that's mm-hmm. completely, that's just some insane shit I've never heard. I mean, you know, uh, for me, it was like when our house got broken into, like I had yeah. to like grow up a bit. But, you know, even that was sort of different because it happened and then nothing happened after that. Like the cops came. Actually, first the cops didn't come. I had to call mm-hmm. again and be like, I don't know if he's still in the house. He might be armed. That's when they came because I said mm-hmm. something, he might be armed. He was, there was no one else in the house. Uh, so I had to wait 40 minutes. Then uh, another squad of detectives came. They fingerprinted a bunch of things. Uh, they did not fingerprint the door in which he broke in. He broke in on the second floor. So I had to like be like, didn't he break that door? They were like, all right, we'll see, you know. So nothing happened. Like literally all this stuff. I slept scared in my bed for a week. I slept uh, mm-hmm. with a machete, like <laughs> a big, uh, you know, culinary knife, like next mm-hmm. to my bed. Um, and uh, to this day, I sleep. We have a uh, the, the landlord had three kids. He left us a baseball bat. So uh, we, I have a baseball yeah, bat, yeah. and I have a very funny strategy. I, I lock the door. Our bedroom door is closed and locked. And my logic is, if someone tries to get in, I'm gonna hear it. Um, I got the bat right here. It's you know, it's some stupid shit, but like that changed my life. I mean, that yeah. was an, that was insane, and uh, I was shocked hearing afterward how many people had that happen to them. Like a lot of people reached out to me, like, "Yo, man, you know, I know what it feels like. We had our house broke." I was like, "What?" Who are all these people breaking yeah. into all these like houses? Yeah. Um, so but, I, still... but, I, I really think you're right. Like that you have these moments, but I do, I do really think that fighting, and that's why it's one of those things, you know, how, how with physical exhaustion, like running a marathon, there's, there's all these sort of like classic things, like doing a professional fight, like people that just want to do it once. And I can just say like, it is absolutely true. The amount of shit you have to overcome from your mind right before the fight, when your uh, your your sort of like survival instinct kicks in, it's like your 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 mind knows that you're gonna put yourself in a bad situation and tries to talk you out of it, and you're like, why am I doing this? I bet the guy feels the same. He'd want to cancel this too. Like, what the fuck? Maybe I could pretend to be injured. And you hear you have sea fighters to this day, right? Like fucking Darren Till said three fights ago that he was fucking scared as hell to go in there. And 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 fight uh, his his first 185 fight or whatever and yeah this this is just something that really happens so whenever people shit talk Elki because like oh you knocked him the fuck out and stuff I get very defensive of him because I know what he went through to actually start at the at the first bell 
to get through that process. And he did that. And literally, that's all you can do in a fight, right? There's going to be yeah. people that beat the shit out of me. And there's going to be people that, that are better than you at stuff. But, like, all you can do is really show up and just show up. And that's all you can do. And I think that's the most gangster thing you can do in professional fighting is make the walk to the ring and get there and just do your best. And I think that's the, what the experience teaches you. The, it, winning is, is, is completely secondary, really. Really, it's completely secondary. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it has nothing to do with if I would have lost that fight, it would have been one of the best things I've done in my life. So it's wow. like, that's not the payoff. You know, that really is one of the, the sort of, you know, when you say it's not, it's not the end that matters, it's a journey, you know, that, that, that's really what fighting for a fight is, or training for a fight is like. I can't imagine. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't even start the training journey. I already was thinking, what if I get knocked out? You know, all this yeah. stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. I would need an opponent, though, and somebody would have to organize it. But yeah, I, I figured I would ask because uh, everybody talks about chess boxing. I, I would love to see, like, some of these, uh, you know, best chess players in the world get in a ring and try to uh, punch each other in the face. Yeah, uh, yeah that would be... be fun to watch. I would definitely, I would be one of the people that goes to Gladiator Games back in the day, too. I would be fucking screaming there. I like because that's I I do think one of the reasons I like UFC is because of the brutality. It's very pure, mm -hmm. but it's also brutal or something in a way. It's unforgiving, you know. Yeah, it's uh, definitely it's, it's definitely my top two of favorite sports. As I as I told you, I, I like basketball. I've liked basketball my whole life. Uh, it's been the sport that I can't play because I'm so short. Mm. I'm uh, am I one seven five meters? Five foot nine. Okay. Are you like 6'4"? Like the average? Yeah. You're 6'4"? Four four? Yeah. Is that like 50th percentile over there? Uh, <laughs> no, it's... Uh, it's uh, I mean, Dutch, Dutch people are, are the tallest nation in the world, officially. Yeah, why? So. What the fuck? Like, wh why'd you guys take all the it's height? It's us and Norway. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I have it so often where if, it's like, if I bring friends to those events or if we're just with Dutch poker players, other people will comment on it. They will just be like, what the fuck? You know, it's, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you guys are all gigantic, man. It's uh... I mean, we have short people too, but the average is pretty high. I think the average male. Wait, what is the average? average I think it's average. like six one. I think it's enormous. Uh, yeah, yeah, six over six feet. It's uh one yeah one one eighty six is is average. That's crazy, actually. Uh, yeah, you guys are tall as hell. It's what? like super weird. <laughs> oh, that's insane. That's, okay. um, does that give some benefits in some sports? I feel like maybe you guys should be really good at some sports, but uh, I don't know. Squash? I, don't know. I feel like... I, uh, I mean, we should probably have better tennis players. I mean, I think our, like, our very best sport would be, uh, would be football, European football. That's our very best sport that we yeah. do well at. Are you guys still world class? I, I, I remember the days of uh, Arjun Robin, but that's I, I don't. Know oh yeah, no, those are kind of gone. But we're we're sort of like we have a lot of potential with the team, a lot of young people, a lot of young players. We have the potential to beat anybody, and at times we do. But we don't have a team where you're just like, holy fucking shit! Like I definitely think we're the best team to never have been world champion. We've been in the finals three times, but. You know, oh. it's, it's definitely something that Dutch people are very proud of because it's a very small country. You know, we have uh, 60 million people in population and to just like battle it out with like, you know, Germany has 80 million and Brazil was what, like 160 million or something. Yeah, Brazil is crazy. Yeah. It's like the seventh largest country on earth or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody wants to play football. You know, that's also a thing. Like everybody, yeah. like I've been, to, I've been to Brazil for kickbox training and it's just like everybody everywhere is playing football. It's crazy. On the yeah. beach, on the street, in the gym, it's insane. And fighting. They love fighting. Yes, they, love... they do love fighting. They, yes. They, they, they love their fighting over there. Um... Uh, that's a spar in Brazil against a guy that, have, has had, uh, that had 40 fights with no rules, where you can do eye gouging and headbutting and choking and stuff. And I, I full-on kicked him in the face, and they just did an appreciative... <clears throat> he just like... <clears throat> he was like a Street Fighter character. And he oh just mauled God. me. <laughs> and then he just like... <clears throat> I was like, okay, game on, and you just destroyed me. Everybody laughing. Yeah, that's that that's that's crazy to me, man. Like, I I uh, I want to I want to get that tough, you know, because like I've never I've never been in a fight in my life. I've been punched once. Uh, I was eleven. I got into a little wrestling match on like the block. There was some like Russian kids, you know. We were talking some trash, and this kid like grabbed my shirt and he ripped it. He was like ripping it off of me, but he was little. I was like eleven. He was maybe like nine. 
uh, and I didn't know what to do because he was such a little like little ass. I didn't, and he was pulling my shirt, and I kind of wrestled him down. And uh, people like I remember recording this on our flip phones, like you know the really grainy quality. And like to this day, like I remember he landed a left hook like straight into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I remember even watching it like yo what happened because I didn't want to punch him like I, I thought I was a lot bigger than him and he just sucked me and like my tooth glued to my lip you know it was like it hurt a lot uh, but, I, but that's it I've never punched anybody and I, I've never mm. and I'm and I, and I I really would just I, I don't know what it feels like because I watch all these guys and I'm like man it's like, it must be so good you walk down the street someone looks at you funny you're like I could defend myself I yeah. can defend my wife. Like, fuck that guy, you know? Like, he's yeah. not... But I don't that's, that's, know. I have no clue, so... That's one of the biggest things that... that that's one, definitely a big takeaway for me after. It's like, okay, I know exactly how to defend myself. And one of the most important things is you learn is not just how to punch, but that after you get punched, you'll be fine, you know? If you get 30 punches, like, stuff that makes you see stars and you fall down, you'll be fine, right? It's like, it's just a scare thing. And afterwards, okay, yeah, but it's just, uh, you know... It's nothing like okay, so what? Now my like my fucking nose is swollen or something. It's like, uh... did you ever break your nose? No. Oh no, wow! No. I feel like that's like the first thing that would go. I mean, it's like such a stupid thing. It's like out here, you can just get you know. But... Yeah, I mean, it can happen, but I don't know. It wouldn't yeah. What's yeah, the worst no. thing did you have? Did you have any serious injuries like ACL? Uh no, I, yeah, I had some things, some things that just went fucked up. But and I, I was really worried about the fight. I was like. Oh my god, you know, I can't get like injury because I, I had a lot of injuries because obviously, you know, I started training very heavily and they were very old school in their training. I think if I would do it again, I would definitely separate, not do the physical training with the people from the kickboxing gym, but find like somebody that does that as a specialty. Like they were very much about like not form when you're fucking deadlifting, right? You need to lift the weight, you need to yeah. throw your opponents and just fucking get the weight up or something. So I had a lot of issues with that, but I, I don't know. I um during the fight, I just didn't notice. I, I remember knowing that I bruised my foot just because of how often I bruised my foot and the way my foot hit his knee and then like bent. Oh, yeah. And I was like full on on the knee. And I was just like, that I bruised. And I remember thinking like, wow, I don't even feel it right now. It was so liberating. And I was just like, holy shit. And then after also, I, I, I dislocated my rib in the fight because of the high kicks, like yeah. the overstretching. And my rib was just like popped out like that. And I was just like, didn't feel it and I had some bruised ribs from the fight and the, the thing was popped out and I had like eggs on my shin and I was just like wow this is amazing like what adrenaline can do right so that's crazy did it hurt after yeah yeah <laughs> for like but weeks the, or the the best the, the the one thing that I should have done before doing that fight is do a fight locally just to get that first experience out of the way mm. that that would have done so fucking much for me I would have I would have flew through that fight I would just you know that that would have that, that that would have made things easier, but yeah, that that's a hindsight thing, right? Like that's a yeah. Like you already have to do it once. Now you're gonna now you're gonna have to get ready for two fucking fights. Like that sounds insane, you know? It does. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I, uh, I for the last like six months, maybe one year, I've I've been experiencing. Um, I th I think it it must be some sort of performance anxiety when it comes to uh, and, and like chess is very different because chess is very cerebral mental and like there is a fi there is a solution right like right it's there you just you either trash you can't see it i mean i'm not trash but like compared to you know some grandmasters like compared to hikaru like i'm literally like a neophyte like in chess mm. i mean I, I get lost in all this stuff i can't evaluate i mean compared to 99 point literally 99999 percent of people playing chess i'm 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 strong but and i i it, it's even happened to me recently. There was this uh, speech chest uh, event against, like, again, Eric Rosen. That's who I was playing. And like 33% uh, of the way there, it's just my brain shut off. Like I was like, I'm mm. going to lose. There's nothing you can do. Like you're going to try your best, but you're going to lose. And like my whole game plan went out the window. Like everything was gone. Mm. Like I couldn't, everything I wanted to do prior, I got, I just froze. I kept repeating the same openings i kept you know getting into certain positions and the whole time and you know my my angel there was like uh, dude stop like what are you doing like uh, re, you know uh, re regain your focus regain your composure this that and then match ends i feel just awful like i don't know if it's the same feeling in poker and chess i think chess is very unique in the sense that it was a one-on-one -on -one. you controlled everything there was like nothing that was out of your control um and you just failed yeah. and like you did not do your best and you just like failed and lost and uh it's just it's just a terrible feeling and i would probably need to fix that 
if I ever went to fight somebody. Um, but mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe physical is totally different. Like maybe chess, yeah. like, you know, because your brain has a way of just walking off a cliff. Well, also, but in chess, the payoff is the win, right? That that's supposed to be the win because that's when you outsmarted somebody. That's when you really beat somebody. And I think in fighting, if for professional fighters, that's the case. But like I said, like in fighting, it's not so much about the win. It's about what you learn in preparation and how how you discover like your your mental fortitude during training and all those like sort of like dark. Like when I hear fighters talk about fight week, like I listen to Ariel Wani's podcast all the time. This MMA journalist, you know, and he the way he the way the fighters still talk about like this guy. You know, this new guy just talked about like, oh, the, the week before the fight's so dark and I get in my head and people have to pull me out. And I was like, holy shit, this guy has 15 professional fights and it still happens, you know? So I think that that also gives you sort of like the the pride in yourself. And But, you know, in poker, it's really hard because in poker, you don't, you, you, you also look at the result a lot, but you have to look at long-term results all the time. Sometimes you can win and you play like shit, and then you play the best fucking. I'm in, I'm in a downswing right now, which means that I'm losing for for a, a longer period of time. And whenever we do evaluations, there's better, higher percentage of good decisions. All my stats look fucking great. Like all the feedbacks, like this is fucking amazing. Please doing, keep doing what you do, you know. But the payoff's not there because there, it, there's a chance element. But you just have to understand, like in the long term, that's gonna work out and. Uh, you know, I, I always thought like that's also one of the great things. And I, I kind of gave a little bit of a rub to chess, I guess, back in the day, because I always say like, if you play chess against somebody twice, you don't want to play a third time because it's it's such a skill game. They're going to smash you and they're going to keep mm. smashing you and you're not going to be able to win. Whereas in poker, anybody that would play for the first time ever could beat me tomorrow because of the chance element in the game. So even though a lot of people hate it when they're losing, it's actually one of the most beautiful things because anybody can win any day. But if we play a thousand times, I'm going to smash that guy, you know? Right. Right. No, it's a, it's a very good point. Uh, I also uh, echo, uh, going back to one thing that you said about training with people in the gym, uh, that, that, that is like definitely the way to get better. Uh, a lot of people do this wrong in chess also. Uh, you, you, you have to play against people who are either just above you or are so far above you that they are able to get just above you for the game. Mm, it's like literally yeah. the only way to learn. Um, I mean, even when I used to teach five-year-olds that would shove pieces up their nose, like I would find a way to convince them that I'm playing at their level. Um, and then they would get really excited and say they beat me and you know that 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 way you want to keep coming back to whatever it is you're doing uh you you can like uh, you can also see the the progress uh a lot of people make the mistake in chess of playing against the the bots the ais uh you could do it for fun if you get like elo anxiety and you don't actually want to play against people but it's like probably one of the worst ways to learn because computers don't play like beginners they just play like computers then they're programmed to like have you know diarrhea on the board like they just lose all their pieces and it's just it's not really how humans play uh mm. it's, that's that's actually how you are supposed to train uh some chess um but um yeah i, I i'm sorry I'm, I'm i'm getting a little antsy just because the dog has been downstairs alone for an hour i'm really dreading what the hell is going to happen when i go down there um because i let him out maybe like 20 minutes into the recording uh but um yeah man like uh this is this is this has been awesome i i would still uh maybe maybe last thing before i let you go who do you got who are your picks for international fight week uh you watching do you stay up uh, late like watching or you just watch like highlights because it's so late no i watch the next morning i i i i put all my social media apps in a different spot Ah. on my phone so i know that there's something and i was like oh shit yeah and i put like ufc notes all across my desk and in front of my computer and stuff mm-hmm. i'm really good at just watching it on uh, fight pass the next day um wait who, who's international fights week is is it it's adesanya and stuff can cannonier i mean it's hard to pick against uh adesanya right but i feel like yeah. cannonier is very powerful maybe he could um okay so i think that um i think adesanya is gonna win i think Vol- i think holloway is gonna win Wow, really? Won. You think he? Pulls I think it he off? won the second one pretty clearly. The first yeah, one, too. I really think that Volkanovski won. Yeah. Did you think he won the second one? Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought Holloway won uh, the second fight. Um, yeah, sometimes, man, like these judges score things four-one to the side yeah. that I thought lost, and I, I just don't. Uh, so wow, okay. Yeah. So uh, I think that Holloway's gonna win because I think that the way Holloway improved in his speed and stuff. And like better at stand switching, and he's better for his calf kick. So I think that 
that's going to really... I, Volkanovska seems to improve every single time as well, but I do think that Holloway is just special but in that sense. Holloway's not going to knock him out, though, right? No. Which means it's we'll, fine. we'll have a fourth fight, maybe. Yeah. Which is I mean, crazy. yeah. Yeah. I mean, how can you knock if Volkanovski the rematch if he wins? Because, yeah. like, if you look at... Because, like, oh, so this guy gives you a shot three fucking... Or two times yep. to, to the, you know... To, to, to get back your belt and then a third time even though you lost the first two times like Volkanovski if he would just say like fuck off with Holloway like I never want to fight this guy again I beat him twice and everybody would be like okay we can't really say anything yeah um, I sense. think that Strickland is going to destroy Pereira Pereira because uh, I think that it's just a two be- step too up too big for uh, for Pereira obviously he's the guy who knocked out Adesanya twice in kickboxing so if he wins we're going to have a really crazy uh, next fight with Adesanya and I think that Sean O'Malley is going to destroy Pedro Munoz. I think that Sean O'Malley is as good as people that like him think he is. I agree. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited also to see what happens with uh, 100, 155 pounds. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, man. Like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of chaos. I like when McGregor comes back. I know he's done some shit, you know, but I, yeah, feel, yeah, like yeah. If you, I feel like if you're a fighter and I feel like if you've earned half a billion dollars... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of like, man, shit happens. Like, it, it, it really does. I mean, you do some really bad shit in life, but... That's true. I, I think so, too. And plus, like, if you get judged on your worst... And it's like, not to okay what he did, but yeah. I also feel like it's not reason... Like, I think that, like, the stuff... Like, John Jones, I think, is a scum human being. Like, he's yeah, the yeah. fucking literal, not low fucking dirt-on-the-ground human being with the stuff he's done and the amount of stuff he's done, right? Like, drunk DUIs... Uh, DUIs, uh, shooting guns from your car, hit and run uh, on a, a pregnant woman where you run back to the scene to just get your weed out. Like that guy is, I, I will, I will, you know, I don't, I don't wish physical, but I truly hope that he gets knocked out so fucking hard and that he loses all confidence and never fights again. Like that guy does not, should not be in the public eye. You know what I mean? But with McGregor, like, yes, he punched an old guy. I understand. And yeah, so what he has traffic fines. Like, I don't like punching the old guy, but yeah, yeah it's like, I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's not like I think, like, oh, he's a class human being, but I still get fi- excited when he fights. I know. You know? I know. You know, I was 10 minutes away from Barclay Center the, night, the, the day that he threw the, the thing. Oh, yeah? Because I taught at a school around there, and I was walking on my phone. I saw cops. I saw, like, commotion. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I look at my Twitter. McGregor flew to New York through the... I'm like, wow. yo, should I skip my lesson? Should I, like, uh, go and, uh, and, and go see what's going on? It was insane. People were waiting at the courthouse. Because they Holy knew shit. he was gonna, he was gonna, it was, it, it was nuts. Well, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. Um, uh, I once, uh, I'll let you go with this, with, with this funny little uh, story. I, I, I once embarrassed myself in front of Ariel Helwani. Yeah, really? Maybe, maybe he doesn't remember. I was on a train, and uh, I saw Ariel. I was like, oh wow, it's the first time I ever saw. Like I used to watch MMA Hour like way back yeah. in the day, and I'm like, I'm gonna say something to him. I'm like, fuck, should I say something to him or not? Um, by the time I built up the confidence, a homeless person walked onto the, uh, the, the, our car and it smelled horrible. So at the next stop, he gets off and so do a lot of people to go to the next car so it stops smelling so bad. So I'm following him at this point, right? And I've probably been looking at him. And he, he reali- maybe he realized, maybe he didn't. Yeah, yeah, he, he knows, yeah. Yeah, of course he knows because I, I know now. I know when yeah, people yeah, yeah, recognize yeah. me. You, you, know, you, know, you know the look. Yeah, you know. Um, and I was, I was just like a low-key chess teacher. Like I had no, no following, nothing. Um, so finally, I strike up a conversation with him like in the next train car. Uh, this is where it gets real bad. And I've told the story on stream. Um, one day I hope to make it up to the guy. Uh, I'm just, I'm small talking him. I mean, hopefully it wasn't the small talk, wasn't the cringe part. Well, we have to get off at the same stop. Oh. I live there and he's going to his office. I didn't realize, but I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, you getting off? Oh yeah, I live around here. I'm going to get off too. <laughs> I didn't realize from his perspective that I probably look like a deranged person. And here's, it gets even worse, man. He takes the same exit as me. We, we both take an obscure exit so I could skip some traffic on the street to get to my oh, house faster. No. He's go- I'm like, bro, at any of these moments, I should have pulled myself away, right? Any of these yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't I'll know what to do. just wait 10 him. seconds. Yeah, I'm like, fuck. Like, we're just, you know, I'm talking to him about McGregor Mayweather. It was coming up. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the part where I kind of die of cringe inside is by the time, like, we got to where I was straight up going to go, like, to my, like, down to my house and he was going to go to the office, I was like... 
you know, bro, like, uh, you know, if you want, like, you know, we can like exchange numbers. I know like a good, like a couple of bars around here or whatever. And he like, why did I, like, I could have just said, like, have a great day. Like, I didn't know what to say. Like, I thought I was yeah, going to yeah, be nice yeah. to him. You know, I was like, you know, like, if you want a good couple of recommendations around here, like, I got you. And he was like, nah, man, like, it, you know, it's all good. I'm, I'll pass. You know, I'm not that, I'm not here that often. And then he, and I went on my way and I was like, I hope, like, a car hits me, you know? Like, I just felt, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just uh. felt so awful. And, uh, yeah, now, sometimes I'm watching his, uh, his uh, MMA hour. I'm like, man, it's crazy. I got... I can't, I hope he doesn't remember that. You know, I hope it's, I hope it's just mixed in with a bunch of other cringe shit that he's had to deal with in his life because that still gives me nightmares, you know, like, um, that's amazing. Holy this is the, one of the worst stories of my life, you know? Yeah. You were the guy that passed him by 10 meters. Like what'd you order, bro? You know, oh my, bro, it's so bad. I followed him. Uh, like I, and I was just going home. He probably, he probably straight up thought I was following him the, the whole way. I've yeah. had a few people who overstay conversations, but even those are pleasant. Mm -hmm. I cannot yeah, yeah. imagine. I cannot Appreciative. imagine. Yeah. yeah i had a i had a guy in chicago airport and i was on my way to vegas and he's like oh you're the guy in espn you're bluffing a lot and i watch your shit and i was like oh cool you know and, and but he it was it, it became sort of like too long like uh -huh. he asked me and i i i also was you know like oh so are you what what, what field are you in because you're mm -hmm. interested in poker ask him a question of interest or something and but then he he kept just like filling the conversation to where i'm like Okay, it's it's beyond now, right? It like the conversation isn't that clicky that we need to keep mm -hmm. talking. It's like really nice that you appreciate it and it was fun, but this is like ten minutes now or something, right? So uh -huh. I'm like, okay, I was like, well, hey, I'm gonna hit up the bathroom. I have to make my make my next flight, and he's like, oh, I'm going to the bathroom too. That's no problem. And he he walks next oh, to me. I'm no. like, I'm like, oh god. And I was just like, okay, so I go to the bathroom. I go to a huge mistake. I should have gone to a a, a, a stall. Close to the, the stall. Yeah. I go to a oh, no, no, I stand no. there, but I stand there. And then all of a sudden, like a movie, he just appears next to me, leaning against the wall, looks at my dick. It's just like doing a full, like, sort of like scan, like, let's see what you're working with here and stuff. And he just he keeps on talking and he talks about like his sales team. And he's just like, and, and he asked me and he's like, I was done. And I was like, and he's like, do you want me to get you a towel, bro? Do you need a wipe? But like, you, you, you it was, I was like, I was like, you're getting way too fucking close to my personal space. I was like, back the fuck off. And he was like, oh, I see how you are. You're one of those. Huh? You're just this aggressive, arrogant player. And I was like, oh, fucking right, mate. I hope you, I hope you get two out. You lose your shit in Vegas. I was like, whoa, the turnaround quick. You know, you went from fucking stand to... Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> crazy. Oh, my God. That is insane. I've had, I've had kids at chess tournaments in the bathroom be like, Gotham chess. I'm like, bro, we can't. You can't go tell <laughs> no, your... Not like, here. Like, stop. Like, we can't be doing yeah. this. Um... Oh, I, yeah, I, I love those conversations usually though it's like there's there's a few ones where you're just like oh wow that was that was a bit crazy but i generally love like people can be people usually so nice right appreciative or they say something nice or i was at a red hot chili peppers concert two weeks ago and this guy just walks by and he just goes he puts his hand on my shoulder he's like i fucking love your stream Good luck. <laughs> and then he walks on and it was just like it was so nice you know yeah yeah that's yeah. It's like like most of them are so nice where somebody also gives you an overly amount of space because they don't want to intrude or something mm -hmm. but then you almost want to pull them back and just have the conversation it's like no bro no. wait we can talk you know yeah yeah I, i've had a it's also fun yeah some people are like actually genuinely fun fun to talk to that's a fucking yeah. crazy story dude oh my god that's what a good uh what a good parting note um lex this was uh this was a blast man um yeah I'm my gonna, pleasure I'll, dude i'll let you know when it's out it'll probably be out uh first week like late l late first week uh in july but uh, cool. I'll let you know. And yeah, hey, who, maybe we could do some poker, chess collab. I mean, I, I still want to learn a little bit. I, I don't know shit. So it would be, I feel like it would be pretty cool. Let's do it. Just, just like, do, give me some sort of like opening collab and then we can see, and we can see like, and we can take it from there, buddy. You know, All right. we can, we can evolve our, uh, our, our romantic collaboration uh, relationship over that way. All right, let's do it. I'm not going to follow you into a bathroom and look at your penis <laughs> and, then, uh, and then tell you, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're an asshole or whatever that guy did. So. <laughs> As always, folks, if you made it this far in this episode of the Gotham City podcast, I just want to say thank you for your support on this podcast in particular and everything else that I am involved with in the world of chess. If you want to support me, there are donation links on Twitch and on YouTube. And also you can get my courses at GothamChess.com. I'll see you right back here next time hopefully quite soon with our next guest in Gotham City.